hello 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 how are you how are you how are you god bless you god bless you mm. i have been sinning against myself by eating chocolate and so you see i got one big bump here you see it i got one big chocolate bump here but anyway um i decided not to put makeup on anything nowadays so i'm fine um good morning good afternoon good evening depending on where you are watching me from i have an international um viewers i will come from all over the world to watch me so i always greet them amen morning afternoon evening some do watch the replay but anywho i am excited about today as usual today i have a very interesting topic and this topic has to do with abuse abuse so as you join me i want you to take your seat take a cup of tea coffee juice whatever you drink water and let's deal with this serious serious issue abuse has been going on for as long as we know but i think it's about time that we really face this issue head on talk about it deal with it educate people about it because oftentimes the people who are the victim of this bad and terrible hindus i mean ungodly act are women a lot of women suffer in the hand of the man who was supposed to love them care for them and protect them and we look on sometimes and say nothing and do absolutely nothing so today is going to be a very 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 interesting time in the presence of god here with the people of god so as you join me good afternoon onika as you join me i want you to help me share this broadcast on all your platforms pages uh, facebook groups there are so many different groups don't only share it in my groups like the gathering of the intercessions intercessors okay god bless you pamela don't only share this in the gathering of the intercessors but share it on all the platforms all the groups amen share it in i don't care beauty groups um whatever groups you know if it is a group share it in it because everybody needs to hear this everybody needs to know this everybody has to understand this everybody has to get this everybody needs to know that we are sounding the alarm and we are saying no to abuse we are saying no to our violence amen we are saying no 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 we are saying no so i'm just going to wait for everybody to jump on amen i'm going to wait for my friends to come on but why i wait i want us to enjoy the presence of god thanks for sharing invite somebody tag somebody so enjoy the sound while we wait hallelujah oh thank you lord father we bless you father we glorify you father we give you praise Father, we give you adoration father we give you thanksgiving father we just bless your holy name we say thank you thank you thank you thank you we adore you father we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor we give you adoration we give you thanksgiving oh god we say there is no one like you adonai king of kings prince of peace adonai no one like you nobody like you nowhere adonai we bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, our majesty. Our majesty, we welcome you in this place. Oh, we welcome you in this place. We bless you, Father. We honor you, Father. Latakusi kilibia kapaya. Ulebeke sende labalusi kibia kadusi kabala sante. Father, we ordain this broadcast and this time to you, God. That it will be a time that you move, you touch people, you empower people, you encourage people. Father God, you strengthen people, you, you bring people out. Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you will speak not only to women, but you will speak to the men that are going to watch, to the men that are going to listen. Father, it's going to be a time that we just, Father, we hear from you and begin to move as your children, Father. Father, as we gather in this place, let there be, let there be a move of your spirit. Let there be a move 
of your power. Let there be a move of your glory. Let your fire begin to move. Let your power begin to move. Let your anointing begin to move, oh God. Father, we worship you. Father, we bless you. Father, we glorify you. Father, we magnify you. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you thanksgiving. We give you adoration. Father, we give you worship. Father, we adore you. We bless you, Adonai, because there is none like you, Father. No one like you, Father. No God like Jehovah. There is no God whatsoever like our God. There is no God like Jehovah. So today we bless you. So today we glorify you. So today we magnify you. Today we give you praise. Today we give you honor. We give you adoration. We give you thanksgiving, Father. We bless your name, King. We bless your name, our Most High King. As you join me, begin to share this broadcast. Amen. Share, share, share. Spare no group. Spare no person. Hallelujah. We thank you, Abba Father. God bless you, Jamasia. God bless you, everyone. God bless you, Sister Fatima. Hallelujah. As you join me, begin to share because God is going to deliver, set free today. God is going to bring us to the place where we need to be, where we ought to be. God is going to speak to somebody's heart. God is going to strengthen somebody. God is going to comfort somebody. God is going to anoint. God bless you, Milen. Share in all your groups, whether it is Curacao, um, Indonesia, whatever group you have. Do not be worried if it's a group on Facebook, share it there because there are too many women dying, there are too many people suffering and maybe there are some men who have not been educated. God bless you, Patrick. But we want to speak to them today. We want to let them know that it is not okay. It is not okay to be abused. It is not okay to be beaten up. It is not okay. Come on, somebody, help me today. Help me talk to somebody. Help me encourage somebody. Oh, Saka Lobo, Sika Laba Hande Lebeka, Sante Lebeka Yaba Sundelia, Eboko Santa Laba Hande Lebeke, Sende Lebeka Sante. Come on, somebody, begin to share this broadcast. You are welcome. You are welcome in this place. You are welcome in this place. You are welcome. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Adonai. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Prince of Peace. We worship you, God. We, we adore you, God. We give you praise, O oh God. We give you thanksgiving, O oh God. We thank you, O oh Father. Abba, Father, have your way in this place. There is none like you, Abba, Father. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody, in the platform where God is going to touch us today. Oh, so cool. Oh, baka sante, leba kayande. Heboko Santa la bahande le be kaya sunte li abakaya sunte le be kesende e baka sante le boko sunte balasuka la basante le baya sunderia. Father, we bless you. We bless you, King. We bless you, O Master. We give you praise, our God. We give you adoration, our God. We give you thanksgiving. Somebody begin to pray in this place as we invite God, the presence of God. We can't do anything beside God. We can't do anything without God. So we must start with God. We must start with God. Somebody begin to praise his name in this place. Oh, we bless you, God. We thank you, God, that you are going to speak to the men. You are going to speak to the women. You are going to speak to your people. You are not going to spare none, but you are going to encourage us and help us and teach us and show us the way. Father, we just bless you this day. We just give you praise this day. We just give you glory. We just give you thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Is anybody praising the Lord? Is anybody speaking to God? Is anybody talking to God this day? Is anybody calling upon the name of the Lord? Is anybody celebrating God today? Is anybody encountering God? Is anybody? Oh, Korabaka Sandiri Abakasante. Come on, begin to speak to God. Begin to speak to God. Begin to worship Him. Begin to set that comment. Begin to speak to God. Write down the comment. What do you want God to do today? What are you expecting from, from God? Write it down because God is going to touch you. Some of you women are going to receive revelation, insight, strength to deal with that situation, with that abusive situation. God is going to touch you today. God is going to show you the way out. God is going to show you the way how to pray. Oh, labaka sante, lebayaba sante. We thank you, God. We bless you, God. We give you praise, oh God. We give you glory, oh God. We give you thanksgiving, oh God. We give you adoration, oh God. We worship you. God bless you, mommy. Help me share this. Please help me share. As you join me, 
as you join me you share as you join me you share because god wants to do something today god wants to heal people today god wants to touch people today i'm just waiting for my friends to gather onto the presence of god and i know god is going to do some really wonderful great and some awesome things onto this place today hallelujah hallelujah we bless you god we bless you king we bless you adonai we bless you we bless you we bless you we bless you we celebrate you god thank you abba father thank you king of kings thank you prince of peace oh we bless you i want everybody online to write down we say no to abuse come on write it down everybody online write it down we say no to abuse if you agree that there is no need for abuse i want you to write it down write it down write it down we say no to abuse come on help me today oh come on let's do this together let's do this together write it down everybody we say no to abuse we say no to abuse come on write it down write it down if you agree with me today i want you to write it down god bless you sister ellie god bless all of you for joining on we say no to abuse. O sakala bahande lebe kala suta la baka sante lea. E boko sande la baya sante lebe ya ka sande. E boko sande lebe ya ka basande lebe ya soke lebe ya ka santa. E boko sande lea baka sande. Come on, write it down. We say no to abuse. You, you never know who you may help today. Come on, write it down. We say no to abuse. We don't agree with abuse. We don't stand with it. We stand against it in the name of Jesus. We say no to abuse. Come on, write it down. I am writing this down because I want somebody to get it. Come on, write it down. We say no to abuse. We say no to abuse. Oh, labaka santa, labako sente lebaya. Come on, somebody write it down. Somebody write it down. Somebody is going to save a woman today. Somebody is going to speak to a man today. No more, no more abuse. We say no to abuse. Oh, baka santa, rabaka sande. Come on, women. Come on, women. Come on, women. Push with me today. Come on, women. Push with me today. We say no to abuse. We say no to domestic violence. We say no to abuse. No to domestic violence. No to abuse. O rabaka sande lebe kaya sunte lebe kaya sunde labaka sande ebo kusente laba ya sunte lebe kaya sande ya o baka sande lebe kaya sunde o raba baba sheke lebe ya kaya sante. We say no to abuse in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome everybody. I welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today I want to deal with this hard not um. Uh, on topic the topic of abuse as you see um, on the title I wrote beloved women love and value yourself enough to say no to abuse of any kind that same strength you are using to stay in abuse you can use it to get out too many women have died in the hands of a man who was supposed to love them so I wrote hashtag stop the abuse, women's life matter, break the silence, we say no to abuse, stop beating your wife, and of course, I ask everybody to share this. Hallelujah. Um, I really want to dive into it today, and how many of you say, Apostle, we really need this topic? We really need to do this, and we really need to go there today. And I really want to do this, and I really want to go there today. I want to go there today with those who are willing to go with me. Because always I come here, my idea and desire is to save a life, to protect somebody, to encourage somebody, to comfort somebody, to strengthen somebody, and to give somebody something that they might not have themselves or could not get themselves. But I want to use the word of God, the power of God, the power of the Holy Ghost to, oh Lord, please take the stage, yes, yes, I want the power of the Holy Ghost to do something in somebody's life today, and I believe God is really going to take control today, because many have died in silence, amen, come on, write it down, break the silence, write it down, everybody, write it down, break the silence, many have died in silence, 
but we are saying no more. No more are our women going to die in silence because we are going to sound the alarm. Come on, somebody flow with me today. No more are our women going to die in silence because we are going to break the silence. We are going to sound the alarm. Come on, comment, comment, release those comments. Don't don't be don't 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 do that. Don't don't leave me here all by myself. Amen. Don't leave me all by myself in this place. We want to break the silence today. So everybody write it down. Break the silence. Break the silence. Break the silence. Come on, write it down. Break the silence. It's time to break the silence. It's time for women to no longer be silent about these matters. No longer be quiet about these matters. It's time to break the silence and begin to speak out like never ever before come on write it down we're going to do a couple of things today we're going to preach together i'm going to preach but you're going to preach with me amen we're going to uh, write down break the silence because enough is enough how many of you believe and agree with me that enough is enough it's time to break the silence amen it's time to break the silence. It's time to say no to abuse. It's time to say no to the works of darkness. It's time to say um, no to this demonic evil act that it should not be found anywhere, especially in the body of Christ. I am trying to make sure I get everybody online. That's why I'm still talking like this, but we are going to go deeper. Amen. Come on, write it down. Everybody online, write it down. Break the silence. It's time to break the silence. It's time to come out of the hiding and begin to sound the alarm. If you are a woman under the sound of my voice and you are being abused, you are being uh, um, beaten in your marriage, your husband is beating you, is abusing you physically, mentally, sexually, or any kind of way, I want you today to um, break to do something and break the silence if you are a woman in the kingdom and i believe most of us here are i want you to begin to take steps to break the silence amen now we are talking about breaking the silence come on somebody i want you to break the silence amen so the thing is this i've been receiving a lot of posts and a lot of things um, that people are sending to me because they are saying to me, Apostle, are you saying what? Because they know that I like to speak about things that are against the will of God, things that are not working for us in the kingdom. And they began to say to me, Apostle, have you seen that this person died? This woman was beaten. She's in the hospital. I mean, these are women who are married to Christian men. Are you with me? These are women who are married to Christian men. These are women who are married, some of them married to bishops. They are married to pastors. They are married to apostles. They are married to brothers who say that they are of Christ. They, they met them in church. They said, I will be with you. till They do me part. I will take care of you. They made the vow and the covenant at the altar of God. But yet when these women marry this man, the man is beating them. You know, lately I've been talking to singles and I've been giving guidelines on what to do and what not to do. Good morning. And I've been talking about using discernment, be prayerful, be patient. Don't be in a hurry, single people. Do not be in a hurry. Do not allow yourself to be pressured by anybody. Do not be... Um, um, be, don't, don't be manipulated amen don't don't feel guilty or feel like you are cursed and that because of the curse you cannot that's why you are not married so you want to prove yourself that you are great by getting somebody it is not by force to get somebody now for every person on earth who is called to marry god has somebody great for you how many of you believe it come on hit that love button hit that like button do something to help me boost up this broadcast amen don't be watching me and be doing other things and be distracted that's how women get themselves in trouble because women women don't pay attention women are the most distracted when it comes to things like this when they ought to be listening they will not be listening they'll be doing one thousand different things pay attention some of you may already be in that abusive relationship but it is not the will of god for you 
Amen. It is not the will of God for you to be with a man who beats the daylight out of you, manipulates you, uh, uh, um, sexually uh, abuse you, mentally abuse you, emotionally abuse you, and in verbally abuse you. There are women who are not being beaten up physically by their men, but the man is saying so many demonic things to them that is even worse than physical abuse. Are you with me? It's even worse than physical abuse. So abuse is abuse, whether it is physical, verbal, emotional, mental, or what everything. Whatever thing it is, abuse is abuse. And it always starts from the foundation. If we all paid attention from the beginning, I am not in any relationship. Thank God for that. I am not in any relationship at this moment. And I thank God for that for so many reasons. But I've been a woman in a relationship. And in that relationship, I was heavily abused. I always say to my audience that anything you see me come on this platform and speak to you about, oftentimes I've been through it. Oftentimes I've experienced it. So it gives me the insight to come and speak about it from a place of understanding, from a place of revelation, and from a place where I've gone through it. And because I've been through it, I learned some lessons. I learned some good things. I learned some bad things. But together they become, um, they become a, a, a lesson that I can pass on to people, either to help them get out of that situation or to prevent them from going into that situation. So I want to speak to women today and help them not to get into that situation, number one. It all starts from the beginning of your connection. Number one, when you are connecting with somebody, make sure it is of God. Make sure that connection, it is of God. And don't just look at the outer um, uh, um, package, but look at the content of what you are getting yourself involved with. Look at the person. Look at the way they behave. Look at the way they talk. Look at the way they talk to other people. There are so many things. If women could only pay attention, we have intuition. Hello? Come on, write it down. Use your intuition. Why is nobody writing down the comments? Use your woman's intuition. God has given us natural alarm system. All women. Supernaturally, all women have a supernatural alarm system. When you begin to date a man as a woman, is somebody with me today? I need somebody to be with me today. As a woman, when you begin to date a man, whether you agree with me today or not, oftentimes something in your system tells you that this is not good. Something they do or somehow what they say or the way they behave tells you that this is danger zone. Every woman we always sense that alarm. You will always look at the man and something in you will be like, hmm, something is not good. You will feel an unease. You will, you will see things that make you afraid or make you wonder. Once there is a question mark, come on somebody, walk with me today. Hit that like button. I want this broadcast to go higher. Don't allow me to have just few people watching me. Come on, help me share this in all your groups. Help me share this in all groups. Amen. Oftentimes, whether he is a pastor or not, something he will say or something he will do or something in your spirit, even when he's acting like he's perfect, something within you will tell you that, hmm, this is odd, this is weird. But the problem is women, we are, we are like Mother Teresa's in so many situations. We excuse it. When that alarm comes on, what we do is we excuse it. We use our natural mind to block our spiritual senses. And then we go to the second date. And the second date, you see that he's acting in a certain way or the way he writes you. The manner of approach is already something that can tell you that this person is not, is not normal. The way they approach you from the first day, they said, hello. Maybe they didn't even say hello. You can feel, if you are honest, you can feel when a man is aggressive. Come on, somebody. If you are honest with men, when you begin to date a man, when you begin to engage a man, when you begin to encounter a man, 
You can tell if there is something aggressive about his, his spirit or his way of approach. His manner of approach. We sound an alarm. Let me give you an example to begin with. Let me give you an example. There was a time I was um, on my, in my messenger, a, a man of God, a man of God, a true, I mean, that's what, according to his profile and the flyers I've seen of him, on his um, flyers and what he said, he said he's a prophet of God. Amen. I think he's about my age or something like that. He said he's a prophet of God. So, but when he contacted me, like, God bless you, man of God. I didn't respond the same time because I had so many things to do. I was so busy. And then he wrote back to me, who do you think you are? You are so proud. That's, look, are you listening to me? He was not contacting me for ministry or for anything else. This man was contacting me according to him that he had interest to, in, in me to try to see if we can talk and begin to date and then and become potential partners. Is somebody with me? Is somebody with me? And then they said, then, then I said to him, oh, so why are you saying that to me? Sorry, I'm distracted because people are sending me messages. I said, but why are you saying to me, you are proud? Who do you think you are? You are proud. The first thing this man, I'm not going to rush myself today because I really want to talk to women to give you signs to watch out for. Sometimes we want to rush, rush, rush and say powerful and then we don't get what we need to get and then we don't move forward. Are you with me? So I said to him, I responded to him. I said, excuse me. What do you mean by I am proud? He said, yes, you are a very proud woman. Who do you think you are? That's what he said to me. Who do you think you are? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, by the way, I have interest in you, but you are acting so proud. I don't know this man. I've never known him. That was his first time of contacting me. That was his first time of approaching me. But look at the manner of approach. And when he did that, something in my spirit said, uh -uh, I don't think so. You are a widow. You are a very, very strange person. Nobody, you have, you have interest in me. You don't know me. You are already disrespecting me. I don't think so. I don't think so. And then I just left him there because I know there is no way, knowing my, my personality and my character, there is no way I am going to continue to even engage a normal conversation with this man. Then just to find out, there were some people who were also um, connected to me at the time, other women of God. Luckily for me, they sent me a message saying, Apostle, do you know this guy? He said he's a prophet, blah, blah, blah. But this is a message he sent to me. So why he was so-called trying to talk to me, he was talking to other women. And the same manner of approach he was using on me, he was using on all these women. But because I counsel so many women, even women of God all over the world. So sometimes when they are going through things, they will send it to me. God just blessed me with that. When they sent me this man's name and his picture, like, Apostle, do you know this man? Um, he said he likes me, but this is what he's doing. I just sent them also the what I got from him, and I told them wrong. But there was a woman within all of us that this man was contacting that she wanted to try to see if he was an angel because he calls himself an, a, a prophet. You understand? So, but she got really hurt later on. All the signs were there. People even spoke to her, but she thought she was the one who was going to save the prophet and bring the king out of him. If he is not a king, you can't bring a king out of a person who is not a king. Either somebody is a king or they are not. When somebody is a king, the king will come out with or without your help. Oh, I just said something. If somebody is a king, they will come out with or without your help. God does not need you to make a person a king. God is the one who creates kings and queens. God is the one who raises up and brings down. So there is nothing you can do for somebody who is not who you think they are. So why this woman was thinking that all of us were crazy, she went on trying to date him. 
she he abused her and messed her up until she was so wounded but the signs were there from the beginning and that is a problem with a lot of women a lot of women believe they can save a man pastors and leaders even tell women that it doesn't matter and when you pray for him if you are good they put the burden and everything on the woman they put the weight they put the responsibility on everything on women so women being broken sometimes, being insecure, being single for long, thinking, oh, I want to have a child, thinking, oh, what will people think about me if I don't have a man? Because many women think that having a man makes you to be more important, give you a higher status, make you feel like you are part of the elite group, make you feel like you are part of the VIPs of the kingdom or even in the world. When you have a husband, people tend to feel like you are, you are the elite group. But it is not so. So because of that thought, a lot of women, even when they see all the signs, they still decide to stay with this man. They will see all the abuse, they will see everything he's doing, but they will still decide to go ahead with him. Because people encourage women to go ahead with people saying that maybe if you pray, if you fast, if you cook for him, if you just remain cute. Like seriously, that's a lot of responsibility. If you have to become his mama, his savior, and his everything, and you are not even married to him yet, that's what you are going to be dealing with when you marry. Because people just don't change like that. It takes a lot of work. Are you with me? It takes a lot of God, a lot of prayer, a lot of patience, a lot of crying. And some men, if they are already above 25, it's not, it's not going to change for you tomorrow. It's going to, everybody can change if they are willing. But why will you want to risk your life like that? Why will God show you everything from the beginning and you still put yourself in it? Sometimes God show you to make the choice. Are you willing to deal with this package? Are you willing to deal with it? God will show you the good, the bad, and the ugly of a man. God will show it to you. And it's not always that you should pray about it. Sometimes God is showing it to you to say wrong. To say look at what it is. It is not what you think. The Bible says that there is no man who, whose son will ask for fish and he will give him a snake or ask for bread and he will give him um, a stone. God knows what to ask for him. So when you begin to date that man, God will expose to you. Say, look, he is not a fish. Look, he is not a bread. He is a stone. He is not a fish. He is a snake. God will show you the snake in him so you can know that, oh, this is not what I asked for. This is not what I ask for. If you ask for a man of God and a man who doesn't fear God is approaching you, why will you even want to endorse that? Why will you even want to engage in that? Why will you even want to pay any attention in that? Why will you want to bother when that's not what you prayed for? And sometimes churches, because they are looking for a particular person, a musician in their church, they force their daughters in their church, for example, to marry the musicians who are not even saved. Just because they want a musician to be staying in their church, they will force one of their daughters in the church to marry the musician, just to tie down the musician in their church as a member. So they actually sell the life of their spiritual daughter to the enemy. They will see that this man or young man in their church is not safe, is, is, is a backslider, is brutal, is an abuser, has bad mouth, is perverse, has bad character. But they will make a woman in the church to marry that man. Just because they want the man, maybe it's a drummer, a keyboardist, or somebody they see with potential and talent. A lot of women in church are married because their pastor wanted a particular man in that church of the talent they have. So you became the sacrificial lamb. Am I blessing anybody because you people are too quiet? You people are too quiet. It's like this message is not, it's not hitting you anywhere. 
It's like you don't like this message. If you want this message, you should end. at least do something. Comment, hit that like button, hit that love button. Do something. Do something. Do something. Some of you have been married two, three times, dating all kinds of people five times, and every time you missed it. And God is bringing me all this time to be talking about relationships, singles, married people, abuse, all of that. You became the sacrificial lamb. There are a lot of women who are married now and they regret marrying that man. And if they have to think back, you saw all the signs. You saw the writings on the wall. You saw every good, bad, and ugly thing about them. You saw it all, but you excused it away and you lied to yourself. You lie to yourself and you said to yourself, I am going to change him. The biggest lie any woman can ever tell herself is to say to herself, I'm going to change this man. Only God can change a man. There are men who don't even listen to their mothers or fathers or pastors. And you think if a man doesn't fear God enough, he doesn't respect and honor his pastors and his mother and his fathers, you think he's going to listen to you? You think that man is going to do you right? A man that you cannot talk to is not a man you want to marry. You're going to be a slave in the house. He's going to shut down your mouth and you're going to feel like a fool in prison. If you are dating a man, and just by the time of dating, you can't even talk to this man. You can't even, I mean, reason with him. He will not allow you to speak. He insults you. My dear, that's already a sign in the wall. That's a sign on the wall. Because the way he is treating you during dating is going to become worse during marriage. The way a man treats you during the time of dating... You are not even his wife yet. And he is treating you like that without any fear of losing you. What do you think he's going to be doing with you during the time of marriage? What do you think, how do you think he's going to treat you during the time of marriage? A man who insults you in time of dating without a fear. It means he has no value for you. If he's not even afraid to lose you, it means he doesn't see you like any thing valuable is like you can come you can go i don't care i can do anything i want with you is that the man you want to spend your life with when you are dating a man look at how he treats his his mother is he treating his mother without respect or his father without respect how is he treating his pastors and his leaders how is he talking to them or talking about them a man who cannot treat God right. A man who doesn't speak well to his mother and father. A man who does not treat his sisters and brothers right. A man who insults everybody will be the same to you. Those are the signs to look for. How is this man in traffic? When you go out with a man on a date and you are in his car, how does he behave during traffic? Does he insult other drivers? Is he always in a hurry, agitated, angry, irritated? Look at those signs. If a man is always angry at other people, he's going to be angry at you. Because that's who he, he is. He's an angry man. He's a man who is angry with everything and everybody is going to be the same way with you. A man who cannot control his emotions. He's going to be like that with you. Don't think that he's only doing it to, sorry, to the waitresses. If you go to the restaurant with him, if you go to McDonald's with him, if you go to Kentucky Fry with him, how does he treat the waiters? How does he treat those who are serving you and him? That kind of man will treat you in the same way because that's who he is. Don't think he is acting like that because he's trying to be protective. He's a man and he's talking to the waiter or the waitress like that. He's going to treat you better. No, the way he treats the woman in the restaurant or the man serving his food, that's how he's going to treat you because that's who he is.
How does he talk to people on the phone? Is he always shouting at everybody? Is he like insulting everybody who, who, who calls him, who talks to him? Or is he a man who is patient and speaks with the wisdom and the kindness and the spirit of God? Is somebody with me? You are not responding today and I'm preaching my heart out. You are distracted. I can feel when you people are distracted. I can feel it when you are distracted. And oftentimes, people who are around you, they will tell you, your friends will tell you, be careful. Your mother will tell you, mm, there is something about that man. People who truly love you and don't want to lose um, and have nothing to lose. They will inform you like, ah, that man, something about him. Pray, please pray, think about it. And you will think, and that man, when you tell him, because that's what women in love do. Women who are in love, when people warn them about a particular man, they will go and tell the man about that. They'll say, oh, you know, my mother said this. I don't like it. You know, my mother is always like that. Only a stupid woman. What did I say? Only a stupid woman will take the advice of the people who love her to tell a man that she doesn't even know yet. A man you are not sure is going to be your husband. Why are you taking the warning things that those who love you are telling you about him? It will only be good for you to pray. Take the warning signs and pray. Don't take the warning signs and go and expose your family members and your church and your pastors. Only a stupid woman will do such a thing. Only a stupid woman or a stupid man will do such a thing. When people love you, when people care about you, they will tell you. And they will warn you and help you not to be in danger. So if people who love you are telling you what to do not to be in danger, why are you going to take it and tell your friends and your family? Because when you take it to be telling your friends and your family, you are exposing your own, um, your own uh, place of protection, your seal of protection. You are not harming your mother. You are not harming your father. You are not harming your uncle. You are harming yourself. Because now the man will know that there are people watching over you and he will begin to set you up against them. He will begin to set you up against your pastor, against your apostles, against your leaders. Men who are abusive men whose intentions are not good. They will always talk bad about your pastor. They will always talk bad about your leaders. They want to break the, the integrity and destroy the integrity of your leaders in front of you. Is somebody with me today? Please share this broadcast. I need at least 30 people to share this broadcast. I need you to help me share this broadcast. Men who are abusive men, you will know them quickly because they will always be one of those who want to badmouth you about your pastors, about the preaching of your church. They want to destroy the integrity of your church and your church leaders. They will tell you your pastor is not good, that apostle is not trustworthy. They want to break you down in that way because if they can destroy your relationship with your pastor and you they have you to themselves they have you to themselves so do not follow leaders and, and men who come into your life and they have no respect for your pastors they have no respect for your leaders they have no respect for the authority that is watching over you those men are not of god if they are against authority, the authority in your life, it shows that they will never be submissive. I know I am preaching today. If they are against the authority in your life, it shows that even your covering, those who are covering you, will never be able to put him in a place of submission. He will not submit when they give him guidelines. So that tells you a man who does not respect your spiritual covering cannot be your husband because when he's doing wrong, they cannot bring him to a place of accountability. Jesus, 
I am preaching harder than you people are responding. I'm telling you, I'm preaching harder than you all are responding. I am preaching in this place and anybody is responding. I'm telling you, a man who has no respect for your spiritual authority cannot be brought into a place of accountability because they have no regards for authority. They have no respect for pastors and leaders. So how, how, how can they help you? How can they, how can they be brought to a place of discipline? A man that nobody can discipline. That's not the kind of man you want to marry. Because when he begins to abuse you or do wrong things, who will speak into his life? Who is he going to respect enough to counsel him? Because a lot of marriages, good or bad, we go through things. But it's, it, it's not that bad if two people in the marriage are willing to be counseled and willing to become better. So a man that doesn't believe in counseling, a man who doesn't believe in your pastors and leadership, a man who doesn't care about who is the leader of his house over his life spiritually, he doesn't care about God. What makes you think that man is going to be able to be helped? Anybody can have problems, but the person who, need, who can submit to take help is at least encouraging to be with. Is somebody with me? So be careful, number one, who you marry. Be careful, number one, who you date, because it starts... Every abuse starts from the foundation. Every abusive marriage started from the time of encounter before you even went into dating. Every person you marry, you saw some things in them before you ever, ever went to the place of marrying them or dating them. But you did not listen. And oftentimes, because a lot of women women in the kingdom because they were already so emotional so needy so wanting someone to love them to sex them as soon as they meet a man that speaks to their emotions and their wounds and all of those things they have no more patience they just jump and they begin to go without any any guidance and some of you believed in the past pastors who had no intention to help you they were thinking about their ministry because those pastors were, were thinking about their own ministries. What did they do? They forced you to marry a man who was not even saved. And they forced the man to be in position. They anointed the man. They put the man in position. And you thought you married a leader of a church. You married a demon. A demon-possessed person. And then when you took them home, you are alone at home with that man. Your pastor is not there. Your apostle is not there. Your leaders are not there. And you are suffering by yourself. And oftentimes, when women are in such relationship, because women tell the family lies, you know you are marrying a devil. But because you are ashamed, and you don't want people to know that you made a mistake, you want to be proud of your man. You told everybody that he is a king. When he is a devil. So because you keep telling your mother and father how great he is. How he is buying you things. And you know the man is not buying you nothing. You know the man is not buying you anything. But you keep lying to your friends. To your mother and your father. And your family. Your church. That he is buying you those things. And you know. You are the one buying those things for yourself. You know he has never bought you anything. So women cover up for men. Women cover up for the weakness of the men. Just to cover their own faces. And their own shame. So because you've told everybody how good he is as a man, now he is beating the daylights out of you. You cannot come out of the closet and say you are dying. A lot of women are dying in silence 
Because in the beginning, they lied to everybody that he was a good man. And now that they have discovered he is not the man they thought he was, they can't come out clean and say, he is a bad man, he is abusing me. So women begin to deal with shame. They are dealing with the shame. They are dealing with the pain in quiet, in silence. Because you want your girlfriends who are in good relationships to think that you have the same kind of good relationship. It's all about being a part of the, of the VIP club. It's all about being a part of the women who are prestigious. But you are dying in silence. Somebody, at least 35 people, I want you to share this broadcast right now. I am taking my time, but I know that there is a woman somewhere in your group or in your page that is being abused. I am telling you, 8 out of 10 women are being heavily abused. So if you have 20 women on your page, on your Facebook or wherever, trust me, at least 28 of them are being abused. So if you don't share this broadcast, you are really a hater of women who are suffering. You are not helping nobody. I'm going to be very honest. If you are not sharing something like this, you are really not helping other women. It's selfish. So please, in all the Facebook groups that you are part of, just click the share button and you will see a lot of groups. Just put in all the groups. Don't spare any groups. You are not God. Share the broadcast and let God do the work. Let God do the reaching out to the people. Is somebody with me? Share the broadcast and let God be the one to reach the people. So a lot of women are silent. But in their silence, they are dying. They are dying. And so now, we have to be the ones who become the voices for those women. Because the more all of us rise up and say no to abuse, no to domestic um, violence, if we don't rise up and say those things, they are going to continue until you and I Rise up with a voice like a trumpet. God bless you. Good morning. And begin to say no to abuse. I want everybody to hashtag right now. Hashtag no to abuse. Please do it. Hashtag no to abuse. Somebody needs to get it. Hashtag no to abuse. At least 30 people. Just hashtag no to abuse. We need to sound the alarm. Because first of all, the message needs to get to the women. Even the government, they are setting so many rules and laws. But sometimes the government is too late. By the time the police, the authorities get to the woman, oftentimes she's already dead. Or her jaw bones broken. Or her face messed up. Or she'll be stabbed by the knife with, with a knife. I was in an abusive relationship for years. For years. So bad that my ex was uh, threatening me every day that he was going to kill me. Every day living with that fear of if you tell people I'm going to kill you. And that's one of the signs of the abusive men abusive men you know them by how often they threaten you they are quick to threaten you are you with me men who are abusive from when you begin to date then you will notice that they are very quick to threaten you to blackmail you if a man who is abusive have, has any little thing that he can use against you. He is not going to waste any time. He is going to use it against you. To break you down mentally. Abusive men. One of their traits is. They use their, their, their demonic force. To break the women's mind. Amen. They break you down emotionally and mentally. They tell you you are nobody. Who we want you. You should be happy you have me. 
be grateful you have a man like me. They can be a zero. And they will make themselves to feel superior over you. I know I'm helping somebody. Abusive men will make themselves to feel superior over you. They are very easy. It's very easy for them to say to you, who do you think you are? Without me, you will have nobody. I am the best thing. They will say, I am the best thing that ever happened to you. They make you feel small. Because oftentimes, these men who abuse women, they are the most insecure, shattered, broken men themselves. Is somebody with me? They are the most insecure, shattered men themselves. So the only way for them, these abusive men, the only way for them to feel big, strong, and secured is to break you a woman. They will try to break you down mentally and emotionally. And when they see that they cannot break you mentally and emotionally, out of their frustration, still trying to gain power over you, that's when they begin to beat you. Because they find themselves in a tight place. They begin to beat you to still force you to submit under them in a wrong way. So when you are dating a man, even before you marry him, listening to his, his sudden uh, and threats, or they will say, if you do this or do that, I will tell your pastor. Oh, is that how you are talking to me? I'm going to tell your pastor. Because they know you hold your pastor in a high place of esteem. You esteem your pastors. You have high regard for authority and you fear the Lord. So when you are with them, they will begin to threaten you that they are going to tell your weaknesses to your pastor. That's blackmail. So they use threats and blackmail to keep you under their power. Or they will say something like, I'm going to tell your mom. I'm going to tell your friends. How you are? You see how you are talking to me? You are not that submissive woman that they think. You sing in the choir. Everybody think you are so sweet. But I'm going to tell everybody that you are not that woman. Abusive men from the time of dating. If you look well and pay attention, you will see the signs. You will see the handwriting on the wall, women. Don't wait until you are in somebody's house before you begin to say, oh, I knew it. Know it and decide before you get married. Amen? Abusive men threaten you. They manipulate you. God bless you, Pastor Carmen. God bless you, Prophetess um, Kim Shanwell. They manipulate you. And they blackmail you. Abusive men who have no power, but want to have power over you. They also use blackmail. They will put fear in you to keep you under their power. Is somebody with me? Watch how they treat people. How they treat people around you is a sign of how they will treat you. How they talk to your children. When your children, if you have children, single moms, you are dating a man. And he cannot stand the presence or the sound of your children. He always wants them to be away. Or not on the phone. Why are they calling you? We are together. This and that, that. That's not a man you want in your life. A man who wants to control your every move. You talk to somebody. They are jealous. Abusive men are easily have the trademark of jealousy. Extreme way of jealousy. You talk to your cat. Why are you talking to that cat? Don't you see, I'm here? They want all of your attention, but they give you very little attention. And whenever they give you any attention, it's always negative attention. They want to control how you dress, what you wear. They want to create you into the, into the demonic image in their own head. Abusive men don't allow you to be accepted for who you are. And they are jealous when other people give you compliment. Because they want to be the higher thing in your life. And they want to be greater. 
is somebody with me. You should be writing the signs. I am speaking out the signs. I speak it out. You write it down. I've been speaking out so many things. Somebody is writing it down. Abusive men manipulate. Abusive men that threaten you. Abusive men. They blackmail you. They, they in, try to intimidate you. That's the things they do. They are extremely jealous. They are very controlling. They act as if they are powerful, but they are very insecure. Abusive, an abusive man will hardly give you a compliment. Because God forbid you should feel a, a superior and, and great around them or over them. Because they think complimenting you, meaning that they are reducing. They always want to be the top. Abusive men want to shut down your voice. I remember when I was with my ex. I'm a worshiper and I love to sing. When I would be singing in the house, he would say to me, Oh, please shut your voice. You can't even sing. You can't. I never heard you can. I always heard you can't. Abusive men, their number one language to you is, oh, you can't. You want to go and look a job, oh, you can't. You think you can It's so high. They make everything to look so high above you. It's because they want to keep you small. Because the smaller they try to uh, crush you, the higher and bigger they begin to feel from within. Because without crushing you down, they can feel big. They have to knock somebody down in order to feel up, upwards. Somebody needs to comment on this post because you guys, you guys, I don't know what is wrong. Is everybody crying? Is this very heavy for all of you? I'm giving too many points and nobody is writing them down. Amen? But we're going to go through this today. We are going to go through this today. Abusive men, they easily break things. Easily. Abusive men can be talking on the phone. Things don't go their way. And they just throw the phone. Hit it on the floor or hit it or throw it against a couch or something. Or just hit it or whatever. Kick the car. You are dating a man. And something is going on in his life. He's talking to somebody. And all of a sudden he's like um, almost saying the earth word and kicking his, his car or whatever. Don't take it that it's just a car. He did not hit me, but he kicked the car. Him kicking the car is a sign of violence. When he's under pressure and doesn't get his way, he wants to hit something. If he's hitting the car today, tomorrow he's going to hit you when there's no car. Even when there's a car, he's going to go from the car to you. Oh, God of Israel. I don't know if I'm preaching to anybody today because it's like this is a hard one. It's like this is a hard one. He goes from kicking his car, the tires of his car, to kicking you. Those are the signs. Or he hits his door, the door of the car. And you are there standing thinking, okay, he's just upset. He's just hitting his car. No, baby. If he hits his car today, the next time you are going to be the one he hits. An abusive man hits whatever he can hit to get the pressure off himself. He's aggressive. That's how he releases aggression. Are you with me? An abusive man will use force. They don't know how to talk to you in peace or quietly or nicely. They always have to use words like, are you stupid? You foolish this? You useless that? Are you dumb? Stop acting so dumb. And you may say, oh, he didn't say I am dumb. He just said, stop acting dumb. The next time he's going to tell you, you are really dumb and stupid. 
He's going to break you here in your mind. He wants to bring down your self-esteem. Because that's the only way he feels better. In the time of conversation, abusive men, they can pin you against the wall. You'll be talking with him. He comes right in your face to intimidate you. He comes right in the face. And you see he will become like this, you know, makes himself bigger. It's his way of breaking your spirit and intimidates you and bring you on, 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 under his power so you cannot talk. You can't make your point. They always threaten to leave you. That's a big one. Please, somebody write it down. Abusive men always threaten to leave you. If you do that one more time, you won't see me anymore. I will leave you. Some of them are so crazy, they even threaten to leave you for your friend. I will leave you for that friend. If you were already feeling insecure that he might have been seeing your friend or interested in a friend, when you have a, a problem with them, they may use that as something to break you down and bring fear in you, to keep you quiet, to take their nonsense. Is somebody writing it down? Abusive men will often threaten to leave you. They will threaten to leave you. And when you are already a person who has abandonment issues, rejection issues, somebody left you in the past, you will want to run towards such a person and hold them tighter. So in your attempt of holding on to them, and not allowing them to leave you, you will begin to succumb to everything they put you through. My God, I'm preaching here more than you people are responding. I am helping somebody up here. In your attempt of keeping them, serving the relationship, please don't leave me. You may not say it, but you begin to swallow more than you were supposed to swallow. Because you don't want them to go. Women who've never had fathers or brothers or people who protected them oftentimes fall in the hands of such men. Because when you meet them, they always look like your father kind of person to protect you. They always exhibit or show some kind of strength that um, may protect you. You always feel like a little bird in their hands you feel protected but it's a false kind of feeling so when they notice that oh you really desire that strength in them which they really don't have that's when they begin to show their true self and we women we often talk too much too soon we tell them everything about ourselves we tell them about our weaknesses our fears and when we are talking to abusive men those wicked ones they listen they listen to your weak points they listen to your weaknesses women when you meet a man before you know who he truly is don't tell him all the place of your brokenness and your weakness my god you are giving the enemy too much information don't give somebody too much information of yourself too soon. They can enter in and begin to use that place of your weakness and your brokenness. They don't even have to analyze and get it for themselves. Because you told them. You told them everything about you. You told them you are afraid when people want to leave you. You told them, oh, you don't want somebody to just this and that. So because you told them, they begin to use it up against you. They feel like they are the best thing that ever came to your life. And they know you have brokenness issues, abandonment issues, rejections issues. So when they are with you, every time... They begin to use your own issues to threaten you. And you fall in that trap. 
Is, is somebody getting what God is saying today? You fall in their trap. Because it's like they have your, your direct contact into your soul. But you gave it to them. You gave that man the direct contact into your soul too soon. All of us have done it. We tell them about the uncle who doesn't like us, the auntie who doesn't love us, and this and that. You sell your own family. Women, do not sell your family to this man. You tell them your family doesn't love you, your family doesn't support you, your family doesn't do this. You are telling them that the walls of your life is broken. You are letting them through the big gates into your Jerusalem. Sister Fatima, please go to my main page and watch this broadcast there. You are giving them direct access into your Jerusalem. They don't even have to go through the walls. You already br brought them through the gates and give them all the insight too soon. And the enemy will use it against you. Are you with me? They will use it against you. Don't give men you don't know information about all the bad things that happened to you or in your family. When you tear down your family in front of a man, you don't even know you just broken down your own gates of protection. Your own walls of protection. Are you with me? You just broken down your own wall of protection. So now you can't tell him, you can't use your uncle to, to threaten him because you already told him your uncle doesn't like you. God have mercy. I know I'm helping somebody. You can't. So don't tell all of you too soon. Write it down. Keep important information to yourself and your family. Don't sell out your family too soon. You are giving away your, your, your wall of protection. You are making yourself vulnerable. Is somebody with me? Don't do it. Women, don't do it. What else should we watch out for? They want to know. Is the abusive men meet you? They want to know how much money you make. Informations. Okay, let, let me. Okay, okay. Let, let me give this and give this quick. Information about things that you are not comfortable. There are some things you are not comfortable to talk about. In the during the first date, or you just met, he will force it out of you. That is a sign of an abusive man. There are some informations you may want to keep to yourself. You are not comfortable to tell anybody about them yet. But an abusive man will force you to tell him things that you are not ready. To tell him yet. He has no sense of your. Um, to, to maintain your boundaries. He goes beyond your boundaries. Oh God of Israel help me. Help me help somebody. Abusive man. We bypass protocol. Parozuka rabahandiria. Man takaduke rezo kotoli kabahande. Man te labakuziki dibia. An abusive man we bypass protocol they have no sense of protocol they do not respect your boundaries they will force you to go beyond yourself am I helping anybody am I helping anybody in the name of Jesus abusive men we force you to go beyond your own boundaries and you will feel like there is a ripping in your soul. You will feel like you are being raped because you will tell them, no, I don't want those. Oh, come on. We are just adults here. Yeah? We are mature people. We are all Christians. We are, we are all children of God. What are you afraid of? After all, you're going to be my wife. Nonsense. Nonsense. They will tell you, after all, you're going to be my wife. 
Hello, we just met. But that's what abusive men do to confuse women. To gain from you what they're not supposed to gain too soon. You get emotionally raped, mentally raped, uh, almost physically raped. They pull out things from you that you want to keep for yourself. They don't allow you to keep things for yourself. They don't allow you to be yourself. You always have to do what they want, how they want. They want to move fast, you will move fast. They want to move slow, you will move slow. They control the pace of the relationship in every way. They control how you respond. They control everything. Abusive men are people who want to control every facet of the relationship, every part of the relationship, everything about the relationship. They want to control it. They want to control it. Is somebody with me? Is somebody being blessed today? Abusive men have no sense of protocol and they do not take no for an answer. Jesus. Abusive men do not take no for an answer. Whenever you say no or not now, they will force. They always use force and pressure. Help me write it down. Abusive men use force and pressure write it down no oh. abusive men use force and pressure they pressurize you to do things that you are not comfortable of doing yet they don't respect your boundaries they don't respect your boundaries Is anybody writing down the things that are coming out of my mouth? They don't respect your boundaries. So if you are with a man, women, single women, I'm going to come to the married women who are in the abuse. But I want to start from the foundation where abuse normally starts from. If you came late to this broadcast, watch it from the beginning and you can use it to educate women in your group and in your church. God bless you. Amen. Abusive men don't respect your boundaries. It always starts from dating. From hello, you can identify a lot of things that I've been sharing. I am going deeper because I want women to use this to teach. Amen. To educate other women. Abusive men use pressure and they use force. They put you in a tight corner. And all the while, they are building up fear in you. Please somebody share this broadcast. Can somebody, at least all of you, 40 people, just press the share button and share everywhere. Share in Facebook groups. Some of you are like in 100 groups. Share in all the groups, please. Hello? Are you with me? So you must identify these things once you see them do not tell yourself the lies that all women tell themselves all women tell themselves i'm going to fix him i'm going to pray with him maybe his ex didn't know how to deal with him but i am the one who is going to fix him if god has not fixed him yet if his mama and papa has not fixed him if his pastors have not fixed him honey but you cannot fix him. Stop looking for a project. You are not Mother Teresa. You are not Salvation Army. Stop looking for projects. Stop looking for mind that you can fix. God has men that he has prepared and ready and good for you. That you will have to help each other. He may not be perfect. You are not perfect. But you will not have to be a broken case and broken basket. That you have to come and begin to need and mend all the places in his life. And oftentimes abusive men do not want to be fixed. Because they don't believe they even have a problem. My God of Zion. Teach Apostle Claire. 
Oftentimes, abusive men do not believe they even have a problem. And if a person, a man or a woman, cannot believe they have Pastor Carmen, I'm telling you, is serious. If a man or a woman cannot believe they have a problem, you will never be able to give them any solution because they don't see the reason of a solution that comes without a problem. Until they acknowledge they have problems and issues and are willing to work on it, there is nothing you can do. A man will think he is perfect and you are the problem. Abusive men never take responsibility for their own nonsense. They always put the blame on you. If they beat you, it is your fault. You see, you made me to beat you. You made me to shout. You made me to do this. You made me to break the glass. You made me to do that. Abusive men always project. They always put the fault on you. They put the blame on you. They never want to take responsibility for their own dumb, crazy, demonic actions. Abusive men don't take responsibility for their evil actions. They always say, it is your fault. When they shout at you, they say, you see, now you've made me shout. It's because of you, you have big mouth. It's because of the way you are, big, you are acting. You, this woman, it's because of you, and you're acting like this. When they are aggressive, it is always your fault. So abusive men, in essence, they believe they have no problems. They believe their lies. They are telling themselves. Is somebody with me? Abusive men always believe their lies they're telling themselves. They believe they are holy and righteous. And it is because of you that they are acting the way they are acting. Abusive men are blind men. Seeing only what their blind eyes want to see about themselves. And not the truth of their mental emotional spiritual situation so you can't help somebody who does not know they have a problem and sometimes they know they have a problem but they are too proud to receive help you cannot help a man women listen all of you want to be mother teresa and salvation army you are acting like you are a shelter home for broken puppies. All these broken men who don't want to follow God or believe truth to become better people. You have made your life a shelter for broken men who will end up killing you. Hello? Write it down, women. You are not the salvation army. You are not a salvation army. I mean, he is asking you about the money you have. And he is not telling you about what he has. He wants to know everything in your bank account. But he refuses to tell you even where he works and how he gets his money. Women, wake up. A man who wants to know everything about you. But every time you ask him about himself, he uses aggression to shut you down. Hello? Every time you ask him a thing, where were you? He wants to know where you are, where you were. But he never wants you to ask him where he is or where he was. It's always a one side traffic and he is a beneficiary. He is the one who wants to benefit in the, the, in the relationship and have the right to do whatever he wants to do what, whenever he wants to do it. He doesn't want you to be the one to benefit in any way. So he thinks, abusive men think, they always give themselves the right to be able to ask you any question at any time. They have the right to show up at your doorpost. Anytime and you need to open your door or accommodate them, entertain them. But when you have to visit them, you have to give them three days, five days, three weeks notice. 
You have to call them, ask them. No, you have to send them a text to ask if it's okay to call them. But they have to have the right to call you anytime. I know I'm helping somebody. Abusive men will not give you the right to come into their space at any time and take control. But they want to come into your space and take all the authority and have all the right to do whenever they want, however they want, with whom they want, and talk to you whatever kind of way they want to talk to you. Is somebody with me? Abusive men don't want to give accountability. You can't ask them anything where they were yesterday. I called you yesterday. Where were you? Are you they will say, are you controlling me now? Are you judging me now? Are you monitoring me now? When well, you want to ask them, we are dating now for six months. Where is this relationship going? And then they will flip it around and say, you are trying to put pressure on them. A man who says you are trying to put pressure on him after he's been with you for a while, that man is not a man you want to continue with. He's not serious. He is a pimp and he is not worthy of you. He will say, are you trying to pressurize me now? Are you trying to put pressure on me now? Any man who is dating you when you ask him a thing, and he comes with, are you trying to pressure me? He is breaking your mind. He is putting you in a tight corner. How can you even dialogue with such a man? That's a sign that you can't go nowhere with this man. A man that you cannot talk to. You can have a conversation with. What kind of a partnership is that going to be? A man that you cannot talk to for the love of God. You can't ask questions. That is not partnership. It is slavery. A man is not your boss. People get it all backwards, Christians. He is the head of the house to lead and guide in love and according to the will of God. But he is not your boss. He is your partner side by side. Side by side, you walk with him. Not under his butt. If you are with a man and his, his tendencies are to put you under his butt, run away. A man who cannot accept that you are a human being. Why will you go from being a child of God and become a slave to a man? Why would you want to do that? Number one, when you are dating a man, you have to acknowledge and allow him to acknowledge that you are not his child. He is not your father. He is your partner. Partner means you are in it together. You share things. Partner means you are partnering. When you are a partner, you support each other. You share things, the good and the bad. Everybody benefits from it. That's partnership. So if a man comes in your life and says to you, shut up. Don't say that. Honey, he's a slave master. He's trying to, he's a slave master. He's trying to be your boss. And he's trying to be your father with the wrong spirit. He's trying to be your father with the wrong spirit. If you want a father, stick to your own father. If your father is dead, get a pastor who can love you as a father. Even a pastor should not speak to you like that. You are a human being. You ought to be respected. Even our children, there are ways we shouldn't treat our children. So why should a man say he loves you, wants to be with you, and treats you like a dog? And you think it's love? It is not love. Yesterday, I told the people to write down, shine your eyes. Shine your eyes. You have the right to ask him questions. If you cannot ask a man questions, something is wrong. He has issues and he has a lot of things to hide. 
He is a narcissist. He is not of God. Run away. He's going to destroy your life. Somebody like me, I have too much of a mind and opinion to be with a man who says, I should never talk or ask him anything. It's not going to work. Because we're going to analyze things in life and talk about it as partners. Even God says, come and let us reason together. Even God calls human beings, say, come, let's reason together. God said, come, let's talk. Let's, let's dialogue. Let's fellowship and talk about this thing together. God who created heaven and earth said, come, let us reason together. So why will you be with a man that you can't reason with him? Why will you be with a man and you can't reason with him? I can never... I told people before, it's better to be alone all by yourself, women. You hear me? I know some of you are desperate. I want to get married. All of us want to get married, but get desperation out of it. It's better to be alone and do bad all by yourself than to be married to one of these demons. You ruin your life. You ruin your joy, your happiness, your peace for a man who is going to end up sleeping on a separate bed from you anyway. Because when you are in a relationship with abusive men, oftentimes those kind of marriages, you are sleeping separately. The sex you were crying for, you end up not getting anywhere because he becomes, because he becomes disgusting to you. No woman have Good sex with, with a man who abuses her. You feel raped. You're going to feel raped. And oftentimes, when that feeling is there, you separate from bed. So anyway, you're still not married. Claiming the marital status. You're still single. Are you with me? Marry. Be single, marry. That a lot of, you know, people are crying for single women. Please leave us alone. At least we have peace, happiness, joy, and freedom. There are a lot of married women who are nothing but slaves. Slaves. They sold their birthright for a man that came and tricked them by the spirit of Satan himself. At least we have peace. We have our own voice. Our right mind. There are a lot of single, lonely, alone, married women. Abused, beaten, and battered in private. And nobody knows about it. If you are that woman, you are married and your husband is physically beating you. Get out of that house. Look for help. Sound the alarm. Don't be silent. Don't be quiet. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Tell your family. Tell your neighbors. Call the police. Call the police. Tell the authorities. He is beating you. You women, a man hits you one time. Don't allow him to do it the second time. The first time should be the last time he ever lays hand on you. He hits you one time, that same day, call the police. Sometimes it's not even necessary to tell your pastors. Because a lot of pastors are leaving women in bad marriages and they are dying there. So don't say I spoke to pastor. Pastor said I should just leave it. Pastor is not in the house with you. Pastor is not feeling your pain. Pastor is in their own house. Maybe enjoying their life or also beating their own wife. So you want to get the police, somebody neutral. Who is going to help you? Amen. Get somebody neutral in the authorities. Who is, get, go, go get help. Get a social worker and the police. Get a social worker to help you. 
a professional to help you, give you guidelines and get the police in your area involved. Tell your mother, tell your father. And sometimes, especially African black people, we always tell our daughters to remain in that marriage and some African women have died. Because even when they went to the family to cry, because the family took money from the man, they call it a um, bright price. You allow your daughter to die in that demonic man's house. And you were thinking about the small hundred arrows and the rapper and the chicken. The man paid to take your daughters. Anybody ever touch any of my daughters, sir? Eh? That day they will know that Kakino be leather. I am telling you, any man take my daughters and touch them and beat them. That day they will see pepper on earth. They will see pepper on earth. Nobody is going to beat my children for me. That's why I am working hard to be very wealthy myself. Because bright price, 1,000 euros. You will leave your child in a demonic home. Being killed by a man. Talking about he's your husband, it doesn't matter. No. You may not ask for a divorce, but you can get out of that place. You can get out of that place of violence and abuse. If he's destroying your life and destroying your children, you have the right to protect yourself. Get help. Get yourself out of that house and leave his sorry self there. Anybody who wants him can go and marry him themselves. If the thing is so great and they can change people, let them go and marry him. But you seek help for yourself. Seek help. If your safety means you are going to look for a new house and leave them where they are, leave them there and you move out of that house. Take your children and walk away. I said it. If he's abusing you, your life is in danger. Don't sit there, women, and die. Don't sit there and be destroyed with your children. There are men who abuse their wives and go as far as abusing their children. The mother is dying mentally, emotionally, and physically, and the children also. Look for a house. Go to the government. Go to your city hall. Go to your housing corporation in your city. Tell the police that you are being heavily abused by this man and you want to go and live on your own. Get your own house. Look for a way to gather your finances. Leave him in the house and get yourself in a place where you are safe. If he really wants to change after you've left him, he can still change without you. Then you can think of reconciling. But until then, seek help and be safe. Don't die in silence. Churches always tell people, go and pray and, and, and fast. A lot of women are fasting, but their husband is not changing and their life. I'm talking to those whose life are in danger. Gather your money, women. Look for a new home. Leave him there. And go be safe. It's not okay to stay with a man who is about to kill you. Do you know that a lot of women were pushed from the stairs by their partner in his aggression and his anger? There are men who push their women from the stairs. Pregnant women from the stairs. Women fell from the stairs and they'll be lying saying they hit their head against the wall. They sleep on, uh, on, on the floor. Because there was water on the floor. The devil is a liar. There was no water on the floor. The man beat you. The man beat you. Women don't know how to tell the truth. They will always lie. To protect something that they shouldn't be protecting. Get out of that abusive marriage. Get out of that abusive marriage. Are you hearing me? Any man who is beating his wife is not worthy to have that wife. He doesn't love himself. Because number one, if you, if, if you are, 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 are of God, you ought to love your neighbor as yourself. If a man loves himself, he will not beat his wife. 
because he will, he will love his wife the way he loves himself. If you know a woman who is being abused, stop telling them to hide it. Tell them to speak out. If a sister is being abused and they are talking to you, pay attention. If they are afraid to talk to the police or to the family or to the leaders in the church, you speak for them. You hint somebody. Don't be quiet and they die. And then you say, oh, I knew about it. But I thought it was going to change. I thought it was going to change. No. A lot of people don't want to change. They are not willing to change. But you have the responsibility to be saved and your children to be saved. Is somebody with me today? You have the responsibility. To be saved and for your children also to be saved. Come on, somebody write it down. I know a lot of women are going to watch this broadcast. And I want you to write it down. Everybody write it down. Don't be quiet. Because when they are seeing the comments of all the women, it's going to help them to muster the strength and the grace to get out of that relationship. Write it down, please. Write it down. Don't be quiet. Write it down, please. A lot of women are going to. Jesus, have mercy. Jesus, have mercy. If you know a woman who is being abused, if you know a woman who is dating a man and you are seeing the signs already, send this broadcast to them. You are seeing the signs in a sister's relationship. You already see a lot of things, but you can't talk to them for many reasons. Just send them this broadcast. You can send them the link. You can do whatever, but make sure a woman gets this broadcast. I'm giving a lot of warning signs. Abusers, one of the things you will know of an abuser, number one, I've, talk, I've talked about a lot of things. The extreme jealous factor, the controlling behavior, they want to control even how you laugh, how you smile, where you stand, you greet somebody, why did you greet that person? You normally used to go to prayer meeting, but now he wants to hinder you from going to prayer meetings. He tells you it's not necessary to be so much in church. A man who comes in your life and begins to tell you it is not necessary to be in your church that much, that man is a trouble awaiting to happen. I just said something. A man who comes to your church and begins to say, oh, forget your pastor. Oh, don't listen to your mother in the, in the Lord or your father in the Lord. Listen to me. I am your man. I'm the man in your life. No, you are not. Before you came, my spiritual parents were there. God gave them. And after you leave, they will still be there. You can't come. He can't come in your life and begin to take the place of your spiritual coverings. That's a man lowering you into a place where he can have you all to himself and destroy you. Because your spiritual covering, they are a threat to him if they are good ones. So for him to lure you into a place of powerlessness, he will destroy your relationship with your spiritual coverings. A man who is with you, and he cannot tell you who is his spiritual parents, or doesn't want to meet your spiritual covering, that is a trouble waiting to happen. If you are dating a man, and he's saying, no, don't tell your spiritual parents. Don't tell nobody. Just keep it between us. 
You know, it's not necessary. We are adults. God speak through us. We don't need nobody. That is a sign that that man is of the devil. That man is of the devil. If he is telling you you don't need your spiritual covering to keep things a secret, that is a sign that that man is a big trouble awaiting to happen. Is somebody hearing the word of the Lord today? He wants to be involved in all areas in your life too soon. Maybe you are the one who is saying, okay, I just met you last night. I want to pray about it first. But he just shows up to in your church on Sunday. That is not being cute. Yes, again, he's, he's, he's forcing himself into your territory. He's taking over. He didn't listen. He broke protocol. You told him, Okay, I just met you yesterday. Before you come to my church or before I speak to my family or my spiritual parents, I just want to pray. Any normal man should be able to give you that respect and that space to do what you just said to them. But if you say to them all of that and the morning time is Sunday and you turn around who is sitting on the front row or right behind you in church service with a big smile is the man you just met last night and you clearly told him to give you some space. But now he's in your church. Honey, that is not a good sign. Don't be like, wow, look how he badly wants me. He really wants me. You know, women, we can be so blind and just misinterpreting interpret, uh, pretty things. Give things the wrong interpretations. You forgot that you boldly tell him, told him to give you some time and space. He didn't take heat. He didn't listen to that. He broke away from what you asked him, from your request. And he forces his way into your safe territory. And you are thinking it's a good thing. That's how he's going to bypass everything you tell him in the future. When you tell him, honey, just wait. He will do whatever he wants. He will never listen to you. Is anybody hearing the words coming out of my mouth? Because I know I am preaching and helping somebody in here. I don't know how many people are excited and being blessed by what I am sharing. But I personally know for sure I am blessing somebody right in here. Always remember the last thing you told him and see how he handles that. See how he handled your, your boundaries. A man who has no respect for boundaries is not the kind of person you can trust. He will embarrass you in public. That's the kind of man who is going to embarrass you in public. Are you with me? He will always make you feel shocked. And insecure. Insignificant. Because he doesn't love you enough or care enough or respect you enough to respect your boundaries or to honor the things that you, your, your belief system. It's like you come to this man comes to your life and you have no mind of your own. You have no hiding place of your own. You have no safety place of your own. That's how when you get married to that man, the little time you used to use to pray for to God, he's going to take over that territory too. Because he has no respect for your space and boundaries. You used to pray at 12, he's going to tell you, no, 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 no. That's when he wants to watch football. That's when he wants to watch TV. Hello? That's when he wants to do his own thing. Because he has no regards for boundaries and protocol. And your personal space. I cannot be. May God help me. 
I can never be with a man who doesn't give me my own personal space and boundaries. Because I am a spiritual leader. I'm a prophetic person. As an apostle, I believe in order. Amen. I believe in order and structure. So, I can never be with a man who have no regards for order. I like to have my own mind. It's never going to work. So, even when people contact me for one or two conversations with them, I can tell if I even want to waste my time with that. Because in the past, all of us made some mistakes that we gave some people time that we shouldn't have given to them at all. We give them time and space in our life and our ears that they had no right to have. That's because people were lying to us that you have to be gentle, give it time, pray, fast, birth him out. Birth who out? No. If his mama doesn't birth him out and his God has not birthed him out. What makes anybody think I'm going to be birthing out whoever? We are going to strengthen each other because iron sharpens iron. It takes two to tango. It's iron sharpens iron. You sharpen me and sharpen you. You're not going to be like a bump, a drunk, an addict, a drunk, a perverse, psychopathic, narcissist. In my life, and I should be there praying, fasting 24-7 to birth you out. The devil is a, li is a liar. Ain't nobody got time for that. I'm a woman of mission, purpose, and ministry. Got no time to be praying 24-7 for God to change a man. When God has given me a whole nation, I'm called for nations. So I can't be spending time forever with one man who does not want to be fixed in the first place? I can't. Be honest with yourself. People think, Apostle Claire, you are not married yet. What happened? People approach me. I am on social media. The good, the bad, and the ugly approach me. But there must be compatibility. If it doesn't fit, I'm not going to force it to fit. I'm not going to try to put a smaller hand globes. You know the size of your hand and you go to the shop. Your size of your hand globes is size L. And you go and buy size S. And you, are, you brought it home and your fingers can't enter, but you are forcing it. It's going to bust. It's going to tear up. It's going to cause wounds. It's going to give you cramps on your finger because it is not your size. Some men approaching you are not your size. Stop underestimating yourself. There was a man, also so-called man of God, trying to talk to me. So I put up um, the platform for singles to encourage singles to join on the platform to meet each other. But the registration one-time fee to be part of the platform is 30 euros or 36 dollars don't you know this man went and asked to be part of the platform so i sent him a message i said to him if you want to be part of this platform you're gonna have to pay 30 euros or 36 dollars he said to me that's a lot of money just to join a platform 30 euros is a lot of money. 30 dollars is a lot of money. And you are a man who sends me a message. Apostle, I am interested in you. I have never responded to him. But I just left him as my Facebook friend. So when I made the platform, he jumped on it. And then he was the first to complain about 30 euros. So you... Are speaking to Apostle Claire Reveal, you have interest and you find 30 euros to be a lot of money. You and I can never be together. 
Your capacity is too low for me. Too low. A man will complain about 30 euros. Stop wearing smaller size of hand gloves. Know your capacity. What? You have interest in me and 30 euros is too much for you? You've got to be kidding me. And so women will see me looking at such a man because he has a title on Facebook. I don't even look at such. And it's not pride. I just know my capacity and I just know my value and my worth and I refuse to settle for less. I refuse to settle for less. If it doesn't fit me, I'm not going to wear it. Know your value. Not because I know what I take people out for dinner, even my friends or some people or my own children. And sometimes I spend up to 500 euros in one night just to go have dinner in a restaurant when I want to give them a treat. And you're talking about 30 euros to join a platform. And if you have interest in me, Shouldn't you be encouraging me and supporting my vision? You shouldn't be the first one to complain and become a crybaby. That's another thing, women. Watch out for crybabies. Watch out for emotional, broken crybabies who come into your life. And they complain and complain and complain and complain. Such men will have no time for you. You will be giving them attention. But there will be no attention for you. And you are going to be drained out. It's also a part of abuse. They are going to abuse your grace and your strength. And pull out from you. Take from you mentally, spiritually, financially, attentionally, and everything, and give you nothing back. My God. Is somebody hearing the words coming out of my mouth? If you are dating a man, every time you say, How are you? He had to complain about his church, that's not going good. His cat that died, his dog that left the house, his tree that dried up, his fish that will not swim, his bird that will not fly, and all of that. Honey, run away. That's a project. Run away. If he's going to cry and complain about everything, you are not his therapist. That's a man who's going to drain you. And when he can't have no more blood to suck out of you, he's going to look for somebody else. Those are men who have the tendency to cheat. Cheat on you behind the computer. They have Dorothy in the chat, Susan through the messenger, Comfort through WhatsApp, Twitter. They have Lucy and all over the place, Instagram. They have Nancy because they like attention. They like to complain. If you are dating him and he begins to complain about his rent, he has not been able to pay his house rent, honey, wise up. The next thing is, will be that he will ask you how much are you making per month. That's because he's trying to look for a way to take some money from you. I know I'm helping somebody. Don't allow yourself to be used and abused. Do not allow it. Love yourself enough to protect yourself. These things I am saying, these things are things that you should see before you get into a relationship. A lot of women are being abused because we are not telling them. And even on this broadcast, people will hear it and still go and do their own thing. And you see this broadcast, there are women who will see it and they will say, it's not for me. So you also have blind women who believe they are okay. They can't let another woman speak into their life. 
They can't let somebody speak into their spirit because these women just want to have what they are sex addicts. There are women who enter into relationships because they are addicted to sex. Their mind was not the purpose of God. Their mind was not a good future. Their mind was, my body is screaming out for sex and I want sex and I want it now. So they went into it with a perverted mind and now they paying a big price and some of those men you will run around trying to have sex they can have no bloody sex anyway i said it because it is a truth i cancel women i'm telling you i cancel women i speak to women 60 years old 69 70 till the age of 18 16 years i cancel women all ages, background, sizes, um, status, um, um, occupation, whatever. I counsel women. Women call me from all over the world. Women write me. If you check my messenger, sometimes I don't even know who is there because my messenger is like drrr, full with all kinds of things. Apostle, pray for me. Apostle, can you advise me? Apostle, can you mentor me? Apostle, can you answer this? Apostle, can you they reach out to me? So I know what I'm talking about. Half of the women who are married or more than half of them, sometimes I ask them, when was the last time you were intimate with your husband? They will tell me more than eight months ago. These are married women. More than a year ago. More than three months ago. We don't sleep together. He has his own room. Or he's sleeping downstairs. And the woman sleeping upstairs. True story. So I know what I'm talking about. And when they tell me the circumstances around. Their marriage and what they saw. Before getting married. And I'm like there it is. You went to eat in your flesh. You didn't even seek counsel. You couldn't wait. Because your flesh was acting up. You're going to sell away. Let me talk to women. You're going to sell away a whole destiny, your whole life and purpose. For a three minutes of maybe not so much pleasure in sex. You're going to throw it away. For a three minutes action with a lot of abuse, you're going to throw it away. Throw away your destiny. Because someone speaks things in your ears that are sweet in your ears, you're going to throw away your life. For how tall a man is, how he screams on the pulpit and preaches. You're going to throw it away women. Like seriously. We can do better than that women. We can all make mistakes to get in. But you can get out. You're going to let your children be in that abuse. In the abusive marriage and situation, your children see you cry, see you beat up, beating up, punch in the face, blood all over you. Let me tell you something. I grew up watching my mother being abused. I grew up watching my mother being beaten until she had no more faith. That's how I grew up. I grew up in that terrible environment where my mother was being punched in the face, in the stomach, in the head. Her teeth were knocked out. Her belly was pounced on until she was bleeding everywhere. And I had to fall over my mother as an 8 years, 10 years, 11 years old child, to cover my mother from the man who was abusing her, our stepfather. I had to fall over my mother 
to protect her from the abuse. And because I fell over my mother to protect her from the abuse, I got hit along the way. I also got hit and abuse because I dared to sit over my mother to protect her from being abused. And some children, even as we speak, they go through that. When your husband or your boyfriend or whoever is abusing you, sometimes the children try to defend the mother. They will say things like, stop it. Stop abusing mama. Stop talking to mama like that. Papa, don't do it. You are hurting mama. And sometimes the child gets hit by that wicked man. And you will sit there and let your child be destroyed alongside with you. You will sit there and permit all of this to happen. Just to have a name that you are married. You can get out today, get a safe place for yourself and your children. And let the man get help. There is nowhere in the Bible that it says that you cannot go away to protect yourself. Nowhere in the Bible says you cannot seek for help. Nowhere. Nowhere in the Bible that it says you should succumb and submit to such abuse. Nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere. Nowhere in the Bible. That says you release yourself to a man to become his punching bag. Yes, Annie, God help us to know who we are. If women begin to sound this alarm, if women begin to come out and speak about the abuses that women face and begin to put it out there, I am blessed by social media. If women begin to sound this alarm all over social media and get the attention of the government, Something is going to happen. And if men begin to understand that we are not going to be quiet, why they do their foolishness, they're going to be put in check. Because it is not acceptable. I am training the men in my church. And God forbid, any one of them should ever, God will not even allow it. And I'm training the women in our church too. You are not a punching bag. You are a daughter of God, valuable by God. Valuable. In all ways, you are valuable. You are valuable. Come on, write it down. Write it down. I am valuable. Yes, you are valuable. Write it down. Write it down. I am valuable. I want the women to write it down. I am valuable. If you believe it, write it down. Write it. I am valuable. I want all the women online to write it. You are valuable. Value yourself. Don't let no man to treat you like a second-hand citizen. You are valuable. For all the women who came late to this broadcast, I strongly, strongly encourage you to watch this broadcast from the beginning. Watch it from the beginning. And share it in all your groups and on your timeline, your messenger. Share it with women who are in an abusive situation, in bad relationships. Share it with somebody dating a man that you are afraid of, that they are in a bad relationship. Share this broadcast everywhere. Share it in the Facebook groups that you are part of. Share it everywhere. Let's sound the alarm. Let's sound the alarm. Women are dying as suffering and their children are dying as suffering alongside with them. 
I saw a picture of a woman who was killed by her husband on the day she was giving birth to their daughter. She was, she was about to go to the hospital. She was packing her things. The, the story says that she was packing her things to go to the hospital. God bless you, Sister Afia. She was packing her things to go to the hospital to give birth. Imagine a woman in labor is packing her things to go to the hospital to give birth to a child that the man puts in her womb. While she was packing the things, I don't know what happened. She was in labor. Her water has broken. She called the doctors. The doctor said, okay, come. She was arranging her stuff to go to the hospital. And what happened? I don't know. This man began to beat this woman. And the woman died at the spot. The woman died with blood coming from her face everywhere. She was bleeding on the underpart because she was in labor. And then the man beat her mercilessly. The man beat this woman. And because she was already in labor and she was dilating, the baby came out from this dead woman. But the baby also died at the spot. Can you imagine? A woman going to give birth to her child. Because of a wicked man, she lost her life. And she gave birth to her baby in front of her house. But the baby also, because the man was beating the woman in the belly and everything, the baby also died. These are the things we are facing in our time. There are some wicked man, men. And the man is a pastor of a big church. The man is a pastor of a big church. And according to the story... The woman had been telling her family, but they kept telling her to just pray and don't talk about it. Protect his title because he is a pastor, a wicked demonic pastor who was beating his wife every time, abusing her until he killed her and their unborn child. God bless you. We can't be quiet anymore, women. And the men who love their sisters and daughters, don't be quiet. Don't be silent. That's why I put up a message yesterday with one of my pictures saying no to abuse, no to domestic violence. And if the woman is the one abusing a man, it's also not acceptable. A pastor in Rotterdam, the same thing. In the city where I have my church, the same thing. Beat his wife half dead. And we are covering things up in the church. Telling people to just pray and fast. And then when they are dead, we begin to say, oh, we knew about it. Rest in peace. Rest in peace like how? I am, I am saying it, and some people may not like it, but if you are a woman online, and you are in an abusive relationship, and your life is being threatened, please get out of that relationship today. Call the police. Go to the authorities. I am not even saying go to church because sometimes church people have a way of spiritualizing everything and leave people in hell to die. Why they pray and do nothing. Prayer without works or action is dead, living alone. So I am saying go to the police and authorities. Go to your city hall. Go to your housing corporation. Speak to somebody. Some pastors, I'm sorry to say, are not the best people to talk to about these things. You can tell them, 
But in terms of giving you a safety guideline, some pastors are not the right one to talk to because they will tell you, oh, just keep praying for him. There is an angel in everybody. We just have to pray them through. We just have to birth them out. We just have to believe God for the rest. Nobody is perfect. Everybody is on a process. We are on a journey. Just pray, 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 and pray, pray, pray. And too many, too many women have prayed, prayed, prayed and died anyway get out of it abusive men always make sure that they isolate you sign of abusive man I've named a thousand of them already this is another one of them an abusive man we always find a way to isolate the woman. It makes, he makes sure you have no contact with your church, pastors, no contact with your family members. He will have issue with all your brothers and sisters and bring up strong, strong allegations against your family members just to push them away from you. He will try to dirty your mind towards the people who love you, towards your protective, um, um, how, how do they call it? Uh, your, self, your, your safety net. An abusive man will cause you to be isolated. That's why he does not want you to go to all church meetings. When he comes and sees that you are close to your family members and people, the ones that are closest to you are going to be his first enemies. They are going to be the first ones he begins to attack. He's going to begin to tell you, oh, be careful with your friend. Your friend is jealous of you. You see your friend? Your friend is jealous of me. Your friend doesn't like me. Your friend is your friend that... He pollutes your mind concerning the people who love you so that you will have issues with them and cut off from them and then he will isolate you. Abusive man will always try to isolate you. He will put you in a little box. Are you with me? An abusive man will always try to put you in a little box. He wants to occupy all of your time. He won't allow you to have breathing space. To talk to other people. He will want to control who messages you. Through WhatsApp. Facebook. He may even force you to get off some social media platforms. And he will tell you a beautiful story. That it is for your own protection. But it's a cunning way to get you isolated. Are you with me? It's a crooked way to get you isolated. Abusive men, I already said it, but I will repeat it one more time. Give me one minute to charge my phone. Abusive men are very good at blaming you for their aggression. It is always your fault or your mother's fault. Oh, your sister is the one who made me angry at the birthday party. Did you see the way your sister was looking at me? They don't like me. Abusive men put things in your mind. Satanic things in your mind. Ungodly things in your mind. They make you suspicious of everybody. You begin to feel like you are crazy. Oh, God of Israel. Abusive men begin to make you feel like the things you are saying. You are crazy, like you don't make sense when you say things. That's what they do. Abusive men are very sensitive. They are hypersensitive. Everything gets to their feeling. They live in their feeling. 
you, you may try to say something. You don't mean it the way they are taking it, but they will take it wrongly. They are very sensitive. Write it down. Abusive men are hypersensitive. Very sensitive. Every little thing gets to their flesh. What do you mean by that? They always feel attacked. Even when you're just at, trying to ask a simple social normal question like, Oh, I tried to call you. Where were you? Are you, are you controlling me now? What do you mean by that? You see, you, the, everything gets to them. Something that you may mean as a joke. You may say something like, Oh, that shirt you, wear, you wore yesterday. What do you mean about my shirt? Oh, are you, are you saying you know better now? Okay, you want to buy me a better shirt? They make you feel like, and you are like, no, calm down. I'm just saying that the shirt was interesting. I'm just trying to make a point. No, 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 no. You always do that. You always say that. You like to bring me down. They begin to put things and project things that you never meant in the first place. And you begin to wonder like, what's going on? So as a result, you just shut up. You don't ever say anything around them. You don't ever feel free around them. Because you know everything you say becomes a big problem or some kind of issue. So you just be quiet. That's what happens when you are dating an abusive man or trying to get to know them. Please, for those of you who just joined us, kindly share this broadcast and watch the replay of this video because I've been giving a lot of teachings and guidelines and, 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 and really points to watch out for. Some of you were in bad relationships and God got you out and God is preparing you to take you to new relationships. This video will save you from making the same mistakes you made before. This video will save you and your loved ones and all the women. I think Facebook is um, pushing away people because I went from 40, 45 people watching me to just 17. It just dropped. So I think Facebook has just kicked some of them. What is happening when I'm doing my live videos, there are some people reporting my videos. They don't like my kind of videos, so they will be there reporting and then Facebook will be blocking people away. But the devil is a liar. Those who are going to watch are going to watch. Those who are serious will still come back and watch from where they ended. They will still watch the replay. If you watch just halfway, I encourage you to watch the entire video. And go on my Facebook Messenger and watch all the other videos I've been making this past month. All the videos about singles and even the prayer and fasting we did. If you missed all the videos, go back. Take your time every day, at least watch one video. It will help you. Amen. So abusive men are very sensitive. You will know an abusive man. I already talked about it, how he treats your children or the young children around him. If he's always complaining that a child makes noise, oh, that child cries too much, oh, that child... I don't, have time, I don't have time with you because a child is always around. Take a child with you when you are going on a date one, once in a while and see how they respond. See how the man respond, amen, to that child. Some of them are very aggressive even to, an, to animals. Watch how he treats the cats he meets in front of his car. Did he just pick the card and chunk it away and just throw it away? That's a sign of aggressiveness. Amen? Those little things, women, don't push them away. When he kicks that card, don't say, oh, it's just a little silly card. What's in, is in him is coming out. When the card is not there, you will become that card the next time. Amen? Abusive men forces you to have sex. Whether you are married to them or not, they will pressure you. I spoke about breaking protocol and 
not having respect for boundaries before. Abusive men with forced sex. Mm -hmm. Especially sex before time. Watch out for any man. And one of the things this man, demonic man says, it doesn't matter, I already decide you are my wife. That's a manipulative speech they use. They try to use because women are sensitive to those kind of words. They try to use the wife thing to entice you, to lure you, manipulate you, and get you to succumb. Because if he plants in your head that you are already a wife, you will begin to give him the wifery or husband benefits. The things that only a husband should have. But because he puts in your mind that you are already a wife to him, because it's in your mind, you begin to believe it. And because you begin to believe it, you begin to act like one. You begin to feel that you are his wife. You begin to cook for him. Do everything. You become his wife while you are not his wife. Jesus Christ. There are a lot of women acting to a man like a wife. Even in their conversation. They've already positioned themselves. In that place of a wife. There is no real commitment. Or submitment of from his part to you. There is, there is no ring of engagement. Nothing. But you are already taking the role of a wife in his life. And he's not taking the role of a husband. In your life. He's not paying your house bills. He's not paying your rent. He's not paying your food. He's not buying you clothes. He's not dressing you. He's not paying if you have children, your children's school fees. He's not doing anything that a husband should do. He's not buying you a car. He's not cleaning your car. He's not mowing your grass. He's not doing nothing. But you are taking the role of a wife. Submitting to all his aggression and stupidity. Father God, may you deliver us women. Chai! I just felt that. I got angry when I said that. Because it sounds really bad. It's really terrible. When I said that, I felt a holy anger. Why women put themselves through that? All of us have I've done it in the past. When you try to believe a man when he says, Oh, you are already my wife. And you begin to put yourself, let him talk to you any kind of way. Because he says, I believe, oh, okay, he says, I'm, I'm his wife. So we just go like, mm, we just love that kind of thing. And we dumbly give ourselves away. For one simple sentence. That cannot be backed up by truth. You say your birthright, women, for a man because he to a man because he says, Oh, if you are his wife, no, yeah, if you are his wife, match it by the things he does in the name of a husband. There are characteristics to match if somebody is a husband to you. A husband provides, takes the responsibility. Provide care, protect, and love. Out of love, you will provide. A man who is your husband will show love by giving. The first sign of love is giving. For God so loved the world, he gave. The first sign of love is giving. Giving of time, giving of self, giving of finances, giving of love and attention, giving of support. The first sign of love is giving. Giving of attention. Is anybody with me today? Giving of attention. Jesus, help me. I know I'm talking to somebody. I know for sure I'm talking to at least one person. If the man is not giving you anything, 
And he's asking you to give him everything. Wise up. You are on evil in yoke. You are not in the same line. He needs to reciprocate. Are you with me? You cannot say you are my husband. And there is no care. I'm still pulling my own weight. On all sides. And they accept. Women, come on, stop the dumbness. Come on, let's wake up. Let's, let's wake up already. Let's rise. From our slumber. Stop devaluating. And devaluating yourself. Are you with me? Evaluate your life. A man who is saying that you are already his wife. Nobody can attest to it. He, since he came to your life, there is no increase in any area. You still pulling your own weight. Mentally. Spiritually. Emotionally, financially, you are still pulling your own weight. But yet, you allow yourself to be lied to that you have a husband. You don't have a husband. You are a single woman in a bad relationship. In a bad fellowship. Are you with me? So until women come to the place of believing truth and accepting truth of what it is, they will always fall in that trap. Don't be so desperate as to want to have the name that you have somebody that you settle for anything and everything. Have a choice. Be a woman who desires to have a choice. Make a choice and choose wisely. I always say to women, people always say, Apostle Claire, why are you still without a husband? I say, well, it's going to take a real man to marry me because I'm not going to settle for, for, for less. And a real man doesn't mean he's supposed to be a millionaire and perfect. But there needs to be something that I can I can. Go with and look that, okay, at least. The Bible says this. The blessings of the Lord makes rich. And with it, he adds no sorrow. Something about the man's existence in my life should be able to make my life rich. Even one notch. Emotionally, mentally, physically, financially, spiritually, in all different areas of my life. I should be able to laugh. He may not have a million dollars in his bank account, but I should be able to finally have pleasure and laugh for real and have fun. That's richness. So when I'm talking about capacity, I'm not being, I'm not talking about things that are overrated, like extreme. But there should be some kind of richness. Something that you say like, wow, look what the Lord has done. If you cannot have that, wow, God has really blessed me, the devil tricks you. If you cannot look at your husband after a while, or the man you are dating and say like, wow. I used to be so sad, but now I'm happy. I used to be so serious, just focused, but now every day he makes me laugh. So don't get me wrong. I'm talking about just those little things that bring some color in life. Of course, there are deeper things, but at least those little things should be evident. That when people see you, they say, wow, there's a new sparkle and a glow on you. Some women are dating men. Since they began dating that man, 
it's like their age add up into 20 years older. They look like somebody used ashes. You know, ashes from the wood and rub on them. Their glow is taken away. They look more stressed out than ever. They look more bitter than ever because a man came in with so much stress and baggage and it's weighing the woman down and she's trapped and she's still believing God to birth him out. The weight you took upon yourself is too much. It's too much. Yes, Sister Jerisa. The Bible talks about the little foxes that spoil the vine. The little foxes. Which means the little foxes can make a big difference in the vine. The little foxes. He comes around, he makes you smile. He makes you laugh. He honors you, appreciates you. He loves you. He encourages you. He calls you up. How are you, baby? Are you okay? Just that. Those little things. The truth be told, a lot of women don't ask so much. They just ask for those little things. Because a lot of women have been long enough to have their own houses. They've been alone long enough to have their own house, their own car. And they just need somebody to make them smile and happy and take care of them and love them for real. So most women, I mean real women now, they're not really asking for somebody to come and rescue their whole life. They just look for that real deep companionship. Somebody who is there for them. But men, some men don't understand that. Most women already, after a while, they have their own businesses, established ministries. That's why people ask me, Apostle, why are you not dating somebody? I said, until I find the person that I say, hmm, I'm not dating nobody. People approach me, I'm telling you, daily. I'm saying this to help women. Daily, somebody approach me. I mean, like, sometimes five, at least five people per day. Through Facebook, I receive messages, requests, through emails, Instagram, wherever. People approach me. I would like to know you better. I would like to talk to you. And people told me, God told them I am their wife. People write me on Facebook, give me prophecy. God has told me you are my wife. God showed me in, your dream, in a dream. God showed me in a vision. God said this. People tell me so much. So if I was following all of that, I would have been married by now. But I look and I think. Because I've been through a lot. I've been through a lot. So I made up my mind of like never again. I would rather be by myself and be happy with Jesus doing purpose and fulfilling destiny than to be in a bad demonic relationship with a man that I cannot be happy with or smile with or laugh with. I cannot be in such relationship. I will get out. I am one of those women that I will get out. Like out, gone, bye. Divorce. I'm not going to ever be in an abusive relationship because nobody's supposed to put his hands on you or torment your life. I am one of those women. God does not like divorce. Yes, that's why I am taking my time. That's why I am being careful. That's why I am not rushing it. That's why I am not following all these gigolos on facebook who keep telling me prophecies that the god of israel told them i am their wife and they can't even men should have some dignity you can reach out to a woman that you cannot take care of every woman wants a man that she can respect and honor even if you don't have as much as a woman, something about your spirit should be rich. But if you are spiritually broke, mentally broke, 
emotionally broke, financially broke, ministerially broke, and you think clear reveal God told you about me, you didn't hear God. The devil spoke to you and you believed the lies of the devil. Because God is not going to give me no broken man, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and in all areas of their life. No way. I bypass that level. God is going to give me a good man. And good does not mean that he's perfect or has everything. His ministry does not have to be mega or whatever. But at least let his spirit be healthy. His mind be healthy. That you can have a conversation with. And see purpose and vision for the future. You can build together. Listen to me sisters. A man may not have everything. He may be struggling maybe in his ministry, his business, but you should be able to see potential. I just said something. You should be able to see potential, something that you can work with and build again. If there is no potential, there is no hope. If you can't find potential and he has no vision, no real plans, talking and believing in God, yeah, believe in God for what? What is the plan? Can I think with you? I am a visionary. So when I meet a man, I want to hear his vision and see if I can see what he's saying. If I can help him and he can help me. Can we build that and make it bigger? But if his mind is this small, you can't have a real conversation with him. A real mature dialogue of purpose and planning and building. And vision. You can't dialogue with him. What in the world am I going to be doing with you? Because you're going to be boring to me. I have too much of a visionary mind. Of a healthy mind. To be stuck with a man who is comfortable in mediocre. So you must know yourself and be true to yourself. I have a business mind. I'm a business woman. I'm a woman in ministry, but also I have a business mind. I used to have my own business, and I'm still thinking about building my own business. So if I meet a man, you can't just come looking cute on the outside. And your content, I can't find anything to work with. I am called to be a helpmate. What am I going to be helping you with? Hello, somebody. You're going to have to ask yourself. He's coming to you. You are a helpmate. What does he have for you to help him with? Because if he has nothing doing and you're doing everything, he's going to become jealous of you being better than him. If he's not a man that is really trained in many ways in life. So you must be real before you get yourself in a situation. Whereby a man begins to take his aggression, his frustration, and the things about his life against you. Has this helped anybody so far? Is this help, helping anybody? One of the last points I want to make. One of the last points I want to make. You will know I'm making this last, last point and we are done for today. Amen. Sorry. I've been fasting a lot, so I have like so much of burning. Listen to me. One of the last, oh, I ate chocolate. See what it did to me. I ate chocolate and whenever I eat chocolate, I get all these bombs, see. And I'm trying not to be doing makeup lately. So listen, um. One of the last points I want to make is this. You will know an abusive man. When you meet an abusive man, he will already begin to lay out all kind of um, sex rules or ideas. He will want to know about your sex life. And out of order, he will begin to speak about his sex life. You will know abusive man. He will want already to tell you, oh, what do you like? How do you like this? How do you like that? I like it like this. 
He will begin to, you are not even married to him yet. Not even engaged or deeper in the relationship. He wants to begin to tell you, if you're going to have to be my wife, you will have to sex me like this. I, I like this. I like that. And he will begin to bring ideas about intimacy that you are uncomfortable with. You are not used to. But it's all about his idea. Is somebody with me? It's all about what he likes, what he wants, and how he wants it. So you're going to become his sex toy, his sex slave, because he wants it like that, he likes it like that, and he's already telling you that's how it's supposed to be. And even in that conversation, he won't want you to have an opinion. He will tell you you are immature. You are too religious. You are too spiritual. Men like that say things like this. That's the problem with Christian women. Christian women, you can't do nothing with them. They can't satisfy him. He makes you feel like a dirty, filthy rat who can do nothing. He breaks. Abusive men always break down a woman's self-esteem. Whether it is in the area of cooking, dressing, speaking, ministry. You can preach the best sermon. An abusive man will say, oh, yeah, you forgot to mention this and that. Jesus actually said this. I mean... They can't just lift you up because they must always have something to say to make themselves better. So, mark an abusive man, even in the arena where he begins to ask, I believe, especially in the modern days, that it's not the way of God all the way, but God help us all. And because of what people have experienced and people lying, pretending, Women transforming into men, men transforming into women, people half gay, half not gay, whatever. People ask a lot of questions. Yes, they believe to you. People have a lot of questions during dating that the people in the past never used to ask. And I am not against it because I ask the same or I will ask the same, honestly. People want to know a lot about you before you even get into the relationship. They call it nowadays getting to know you better and taking off the mask to know what I am getting myself into. But I believe there are boundaries. I don't think there is anything wrong with a man asking you what you like or what you don't like. If there should be transparency, then it's okay if both parties agree to move in that dimension if both parties are comfortable with that if both parties are comfortable in talking about certain things to get understanding or know the other person their don'ts and do's their do's and don'ts their likes and dislikes if you are comfortable and he is comfortable and you are mature enough to handle it I don't have a problem with it. I have a problem with it when it's one person's idea and the other person is being forced. It shouldn't be like that at all. It shouldn't be like that. If you are not comfortable, make it plain. I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to move like that. And if he's forcing you, you have the, la the right to retreat is this blessing anybody so those of you who came late to this podcast i strongly strongly advise you and encourage you to watch to watch the broadcast from the beginning because many people are on their second lane second leg you had the first relationship some people even third third relationship you had the first relationship it did not work out 
it backfire against you. You must your strength and you try it again. And it didn't work out. Third time, it's still not working out for you. But the fourth time, we want it to work out for you. Amen. Forget the past. Let go of the things of the past. And focus on the present. You are on your third engagement and you are divorced, you see. So a lot of people who's been through that, you don't want to. I've never been married. Let me put that out there. I have never been married before. Never, ever. But I had two, two relationships. My children came from these, two, from these relationships. I was a teenage mother. So I had most of my children, all my children, sorry. In my young days. And since after I was 29 years to now. I have not really been in. You know. So. Um, I was a teenage mother. I always wanted to get married. But it didn't happen. Because I was still in my process. Brokenness. And I, I got these really bad relationships. And I got pregnant in those relationships and i gave birth to my children but since after my last relationship since i came to europe i've had two relationships i came to europe when i was at 18. since then i've been in two relationships and those two relationships i was not married i was very young very naive broken confused still in my process but after that, those two relationships, I've not really been in a relationship. I've met at least two people that I spoke to seriously in terms of trying to see to get a relationship. But both were a disaster. They were not for me. They were really, really not for me. They were not the kind of men that I should even consider spending the rest of my life with. But I gave both times, I gave it a try, a chance to see, at least talk, you know, have the conversation. I'm being transparent because I'm talking to women. I don't care about who is, a, is, 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 is um, something that I can preach about. When I preach, I'm transparent because I'm talking to help people. So I don't put myself right up here like I am this woman who has it all made. And I'm talking to the women who are all down there no i'm talking to us women i'm helping us helping myself at the same time amen so i got into since after my last relationship about 16 years ago i've tried at least two times to get involved with two so-called people whatever it was a disaster it didn't work out they were, they were really mm -mm, big mistake Big mistakes that I even regret ever getting involved with them in terms of trying to even give them a chance into my life. So I've never really been into a relationship since after my last relationship 16 years ago. The other two people are, are. And these are people in their kingdom. They were just not for me. Maybe for somebody else. But I won't wish them even on my cards. I'm telling you, it was a very bad experience for me. So that as a woman also, as a woman in ministry, it really scared me that people would be in God and still be that jacked up. See, have so much mess. Demonic, I'm telling you, is terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible what... It was, but you you learn from those things and you teach other people and you give guidelines and you protect yourself. That's why I always say these things, they happen to the best of us with all our wisdom, with all our everything. Look at what is going on with Sister Vicky Yohi. Vicky Yohi is going through her own thing now because she said something powerful. She said, I thought he loved me. I thought 
he was going to marry me. Oftentimes we women, we always think we found the one. We always think we found our soulmate. Because we don't know how to date two people at a time. So we keep ourselves for so long, for years. And then we finally meet somebody that we think we like. And they put this seed of lie in our heads. And then we think we are going to settle with this one. This is my husband. I'm going to be with him. I'm not going to look no further. And we begin to act like a wife to them. Amen. We begin to act like a wife to them without even being engaged. Because we don't know how to date anyway. We are always in church. <clears throat> Somebody like me, I'm always in church. I'm always in church. I don't go on dates. Never. I'm always in church or at home or doing Facebook Live. So imagine with all of this, you finally meet that one person that you can at least connect with. You just, just, you just throw yourself to them because it's like, huh? You begin to believe their lies. You begin to gravitate towards them. You, you just become, you, you, it's not like you plan to be exclusive. You are always exclusive because you are not, you are not the kind of person who will go out anyway. So when you have one person, that person has all your attention because you don't, you, you don't, you don't date, you don't, you don't go around. Are you with me? You don't go around. But oftentimes it backs fire because those kind of men, they know how to get in your skin, get on in your head, get in your emotions, get into your soul. And if God is not with you, you can make a fatal mistake. That's why I am not very quick to judge women who fail. Or fall in, in that kind of category. I am not very quick to judge them. Because I know that it's very easy. For you to fall and be a prey. To such a man. They come in all categories. They call themselves bishops. Please do not be fooled by their titles. And the suits they wear on Facebook. And their Facebook messages or whatever. It's a camouflage. It's a lie. It's the biggest is the biggest scam out there. Is the biggest, is the biggest like, I don't know what to say. Is the biggest scam out there. Don't allow their church pictures, their live videos with praying and speaking, all those sweet things about, mm -mm, what all that glitters is not gold. A lot of them, they are a bundle of worms. Behind the scene. You really want God to lead you. You really want God to guide you. And those men, if they are serious, God can change them. God can deliver them. They can repent. Some of them can even apologize and become better people. But because of the evil in them and their own pride and the lies they believe about themselves, they think they are great. But when you look at them, you are like, mm-mm. You're not worth one cent. So you, you women, I am speaking like this because I want you to be careful. I am laying it all out so plain and talking about my own mistakes because I want you to be careful. Love yourself enough to protect yourself. Come on, somebody. We've all been there. We all missed the mark. We were all tricked into things we, we, we didn't want to be tricked into. But now that we have come out or coming out of it, I am not in no relationship. Trust me on that. I am not pursuing nobody. Nobody. Because I saw that all these people who call themselves prophets, apostles, and all these men online and in churches and conferences you meet, a lot of them is a big charade. It's the biggest scam ever. Behind the scene, 
they are not who they are professing to be online. So I am not moved by any of them. I am not moved. So many apostles and bishops and prophets sent me requests. Oh, we like you. I just say like, please go take a walk. Go and bike. Because a lot of them are not real. But there are some good men out there. And be prayerful. Be submissive to God. For the errors you failed before, repent, recover, bounce back, get your head straight, get your emotions straight, forget the betrayers, forget the lies, forget everything they did, forget it, and move forward. Truly move forward. Move forth in grace. Amen. Move forth in grace. God has a plan for your life. God has, has better things. It's better to be alone than to be in hell with this man or in a bad relationship. If you are a woman being abused, Get out of that abusive situation today. Look for help. I'm ministering to somebody's spirit right now. I know I'm ministering to somebody right now. I'm speaking into somebody's life right now. You are crying out to God. God has heard your prayers. Listen to the instructions of God. Get the help before you die. Before he kills you. Get out. Before that man kills you. Don't be afraid of what people are going to say. Don't be ashamed of what people are going to say. Don't be worried about people. Be worried about your safety. Come on, somebody write it down. At least 20 people write it down. Get out. Get out. Get out. Today, look for a way and get out. Some women are wondering, what am I going to do? What am I going to eat? God will provide. God has a way of providing for you and your children. God will provide. Get out. Out of that relationship and get out now. Get out. Get out of that relationship. Get out of that abusive relationship. If you know a woman who is being abused, send this video to them. Tell them, sis, you need to watch this video. Help a woman be saved today. Help a woman. And today, all of you who are watching me, when you leave this broadcast, copy the caption on this broadcast, the title of this broadcast, and post it on your, on your Facebook. Let's get the, 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 the statement out. Let me post it here. Let me see if I can get it here. I want everybody to post this caption. I wrote it today on this broadcast. Let me post it here. I've just sent it. I've just sent it saying, Beloved women, love and value yourself enough. Let me see. Let me see what I wrote. I wrote, Beloved women, love and value yourself enough to say no to abuse of any kind. That same strength you are using to stay in abuse. You can use it to get out. Too, women, too many women have died in the hands of a man who was supposed to love them. Stop abuse. Women's life matter. Break the silence. Say no to abuse. Stop beating your wife. Share this, please. I've just put out the comment there. And I want you to share that on your, just copy the whole, 
what I just put up right now. Let me put it one more time. Copy it and paste on your timeline right now. Let's sound the alarm. Let's get women alert. Amen. Let's get women safe and delivered. And out of these abusive relationships. Help me stop abuse. Help me get awareness to women that they are better than this. Don't let me to fight alone. But fight with me, women. Fight with me, sisters. Women of God online. Fight, push with me. If you know any woman out there struggling, please push with me. Share this broadcast with me. Share this statement with me. And get, get a woman saved. Are you with me? Get a woman saved today. Get a woman and her children in a safe place today. You don't know who may see what you just put up today about this abuse. And then because of your obedience, you save a life. Don't let a woman die before we say, oh, this is sad. And we begin to share it. Let's share now why they are alive. Let them come out. Let them come out. I've just put the statement there. And I ask you to share it, please. Help me share it, please. I'm going to pin the statement. I'm going to pin it. Thank you, Sister Ellie, for standing with me. I've pinned the statement there. Copy it. It's just a simple copy and paste. Help women. And if you are that abused woman, I keep saying it. Don't be silent. Talk to somebody today. Talk to your pastor. Then next to your pastor, speak to the authorities. Because oftentimes, pastors just talk, pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Are you with me? Come on. Say no to abuse. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we bless your name. I want everybody to post this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. May God bless all women online. And those who are not online, those who are going to watch later, may God bless you and keep you. Go to church tomorrow, amen. And if you have not made plans to come to Holland, today is a good day to start making your plans to come to Holland. Thanks for standing with me, Sister Afia. Make plans to come to Holland, amen. Make plans to be here. God wants to touch you. Hallelujah. I'm happy I shared this. God bless you, Sister Jeritsa. I'm happy I came out and did this. I feel like I give I gave birth to my baby. Let's stand together against. Thank you for posting, Sister Angela. Thank you so much for posting. Post this comment. I'm going to post it one more time. Beloved women, love and value yourself enough to say no to abuse. Just copy the whole statement and put it on your... Let's be united in this. Amen. Let's have one voice. Let's have one voice and one sound in this. Let's get as many women as possible. To stand against this was that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, God. We give you praise, God.
thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, oh God. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. name it is the name of Jesus Christ our God thank you Jesus so I love you all um, if you have any questions please inbox me those questions who is going to come to Holland I know some of you are coming to Holland the gathering of Come to Holland. I would like to meet you. If you want me in your nation, send me a request. Amen. If you want me to come and minister in your church, your nation, if you can organize a revival meeting or invite me to speak to women, arrange it and let me know. Are you with me? If you want apostolic covering, you want my mentorship to be part of my covering, inbox me and let's talk and let's see how we can arrange that. If you want to be in ministry but you don't have covering for your ministry or somebody to train you, make sure you connect with me. Amen? I'm going to launch my Apostolic Prophetic Fire Status Network from April. So you can become part of that. You can become partners. Amen? With me and become part of my Apostolic network that's going to cover you and your ministry and also train you and give you guidelines amen so love you and thank you if you want to start a branch of our fire status prayer hubs in your nation your city also let me know and i can train you and maybe visit to see what we can do in your city or your nation and we can build it up we can start from scratch amen if you want to start your own ministry, also let me know what is in your heart and we can talk and we'll help you to do what God has called you to do. Is that okay? Some of you need to start to reach out to women. You start to really, you really need to start getting yourself out there, but you need a, a, an alignment that will cover you you know, to help you, support you, and make sure you are okay. So if that's you, contact me, inbox me, and let's talk and start the process as God leads. Amen. Bless you. And thanks to those who at least um, support me financially. Amen. Every little thing you sow helps. So God bless you. As led, whenever God said so, don't hesitate because your seeds are going to go a long way. This year, I'm going to Jamaica, I'm going to Brazil, I'm going to Africa, I'm going to UK. I have so many different nations that I'm going into, and oftentimes I sponsor myself into those kind of areas. So, every seed you send is going to really help me. To reach out to people. Amen. To go into the world and do the work of God. God bless you. Thank you. Love you. Sometimes when I go into a nation, I stay two weeks, three weeks. And all of that costs a lot of money financially. So, send in your seeds. Partner with my ministry. Make a commitment to sow into this ministry. It's a fruitful ground. 
and it's a faithful ground. All of you can testify that I come out here every time to be a blessing to the people of God. So when you sow into me, when you sow into this ministry, you are not sowing in vain. What you are sowing is making impact. It's reaching places that maybe you cannot reach. But as you sow and I go, you're actually reaching those places because you partner with me by way of your seed. Amen. So I always give the people on this platform the opportunity to sow a seed. If you feel in your heart today, tomorrow, Apostle, I want to sow. This is the link. And on my page, on my Facebook page, Claire Revealed Ministries, you have the link of my PayPal. You can use it to sow. Amen. So I've just sent the link for those who are saying, Apostle, you bless me today. I want to give something into you. You can use this link that I just put up there right now to sow your financial seed. Love you. Bless you as, to, as you sow. May God reward your seed and multiply it in Jesus' name. Thank you and bye for today. Bye for now.